Hello, everybody, and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Why, what is this? Well, it's when we sit down and we go over all the submissions in the PMP end of month event. What is the PMP? Why, that's Painters Motivating Painters, our Facebook group. I apologize, this review's a little delayed. I've been quite sick, uh, so still a little under the weather, but we're going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. If I'm not as wordy this month, uh, please do understand that it's because I'm recovering. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, I didn't want to make everybody wait any longer. If you'd like to join us in the PMP, you can. The link's down below. Feel free to click that. You have to answer all the questions, all three, and then you can join us. We welcome everybody from people just starting out to skilled masters. If you're interested in taking the next step on your hobby journey, this is the right place for you. Every month we invite our people to uh, submit up to one finished work and then ask for targeted feedback. You cannot submit more than one. The work must be finished and you have to ask for targeted feedback. Not everybody did that because you're not all reading and paying attention to the rules, uh, but it's okay. We'll get there. Um, this is the second to last month we're doing this. Uh, in 2021, we're going to change the method of uh, submission just a little. Uh, we're going to have monthly focuses where I'm able to deep dive more on certain types of projects rather than just doing everything all together. Uh, so that is to say, we'll do a month on units or a unit month on vehicles or monsters or so on. And if people have those kinds of works finished, um, then those they can of course feel free to submit. Uh, that'll make it so it's a bit easier for me to do this as uh, finding several hours to sit down and chat <laughs> and, and talk this all through because I have to spend about two hours reading everything before I do this so I can move quickly through. And then I have to spend about two hours doing this. So it's, you know, it's a time commitment, which is fine. I like doing this. Uh, it's just, I'd rather be able to dive deeper and help people more with their projects than the sort of quick way I have to move through it today. So I'm not here for 10 hours. <laughs> uh, so hopefully the new format will mean that we still get to help people uh, every month, but we're able to go deeper and provide some more uh, robust feedback. So look for that coming in January, 2021. Uh, but as, let's turn to this month. So we start out with Tanner, who's got a uh, Tau Ghost Keel. Um, didn't ask me for any specific feedback, and you don't have the base done. Uh, Tanner, I'm going to use you just a little example here. The piece looks fine. I can't really tell, though, too well because you have a lot of direct lighting. If you're going to submit your photos, we've got to submit nice photos, diffuse lighting, neutral background, that kind of stuff. All it takes your cell phone cam. There's good instructions on... Uh, on Games Workshop site, amongst many others, I have a video on taking photos. Um, it's important because you know I can't really review if I don't have the photos. But looks fine. Okay, uh, next up, uh, Eugen uh, with his little pug Rocketeer, um, adorable. Uh, so he had two pieces of feedback: the leather on the hood and the cloud. And the cloud definitely needs more contrast. You were right. Um, so it needs to have some darker areas pushing more into probably deep blue blacks and some higher areas pushing more into white grays. Um, as to the leather on his helmet, I actually quite think that I think that's really nice. You could continue to push the contract, the scratch, the contrast, the scratches, the texture. So you could even go a little bit farther with that. But I think that's real fun. Um, I like all your little touches and stippling. That's good. Just take that another step farther and you'll be in a great place. Next up, Paul, uh, who his, uh, he's talking about his big Gazakul Thraka here. And he's just looking for feedback. I think it's a really nice piece. Uh, congratulations on the second place in your, uh, in your painting competition. Well earned. Um, yeah, I think this is very cool. Um, overall, you know, when I look at this, part of the, the challenge we have is just some of the, you've got a sort of a riot of colors here. Um, things I really like, the, uh, the general scratching and stuff on the armor works. I think he did a good job there. The weathering and things on the metal is nice. I think you might want to be careful with some of these colors, like this bright teal doesn't need to be here, this bright red tube doesn't need to be here. When it comes to stuff like that, those are better served being in neutral tones um, because you've already got every color of the rainbow on here, and those are really strong, really saturated colors. Like If those tubes were both just gray, the piece would be a lot stronger. Just little things like that can make a big difference. Um, some other just small things I noticed, if we go back to the early picture here with stuff like the bone make sure we have all the contrast well uh, charted out there so that's one thing i noticed is that it's not quite as uh the the contrast on that wasn't quite as well refined and clean as we might want there's a lot of there's some tide marks and things like that 
uh, coming back to this first view. Other small things, you know, make sure when you've got stuff like the bullets, like the, when these are all in metals, make sure that those have lots of nice shading in between them and have the individual elements well picked out. Uh, beyond that, I think it's really just, you know, some specific cleanup and stuff like that. I understand he's a messy boy. I just mean clean up in like getting a few things more clean, like here. If you look around this horn to this thing, there's some messy paint there, just stuff like that. So refinement. Hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Jacob uh, asking, you know, the, why, how does he get his tabletop standard paint job improved? Sure. So if you're a tabletop and that's where you want to be, that's fine. I mean, clearly what we need to work on here is probably just paint cleanliness and application uh, to some degree. Uh, so by that, what I mean is things like this face is a little messy and could use some relief, you know, getting uh, eyes in there, uh, a mouth, you know, stuff like that, like a thinner line there. That kind of stuff um, can really help a lot. Um, going through and giving a second pass on your metals very quickly to make them have a shine or an edge is very powerful. And then adding some kind of additional contrast to things like the black, even if it's just a single light layer, an edge highlight, whatever, those kinds of things can really elevate a, uh, a tabletop paint job up. I know there's a lot of, a lot of Imperial Guard dudes, uh, but that kind of stuff can really help. So, uh, and it can still be fast. So hopefully that helps there, Jacob. Next up, Keith, uh, looking for some feedback on his big giant spider. Uh, just looking for what he did wrong, what he did right, and what his next steps for improvement might be. So I know you had mentioned the focus on the goblins. I do think that they still need some more contrast. Um, they still feel quite samey. Uh, I don't have to see any you know, pink tones in their elbows or their noses and stuff like that. Um, the green could be pushed farther, both up and down, so there's still, too, there's still not enough contrast. Um, same with the wood. The wood is very flat. The wood is all just kind of brown. Same with all the red. It's very flat. Um, like on these strings and things like that. You want to make sure those are well separated. I do quite like the, the uh, web balls. I think he did a great job with that, those. I think those look really nice. Uh, and I think the spider is an absolute uh, triumph. I think the spider looks wonderful. He did a great job with him. The color changes and stuff are really cool. Texture is there and brought out. Um, yeah, really neat. I think the spider is your, your big success by far. I think he looks fantastic. So, uh, yeah, there you go. More more contrast, especially on the little guys and their associated colors is my main feedback for you. Adam Williams. Uh, so the lighting and color composition and does the OSL sell? And the answer is no, it doesn't, because we have too many different colors going on here. And it doesn't, like, it's, I you can't tell what's going on. We also just don't have enough, the, the features aren't well enough defined. So here's what I mean. Her fingers, here, there's no shadows in between them. Her face, up here, like, you have light, but there's no shadows around her face. Like, bright lights, when my face is right now under a very bright light, look at all the shadows that are on my face, right? Because I'm under a bright light, uh, like this direct light that sits above me, right? Well, she's holding a fire right here, and yet it's not causing, casting any shadows. The problem you have is that you're, you're kind of working in a bunch of colors, but it's you're using then the same colors as actual colors on the thing, and it's hard to tell what's what. And you're not, you've struck a match, but you haven't created any shadow, right? So either it's bright enough that she's going to be affected by the tone, or it's not, and it should just be there. My, I'll, I'll make this very real for you. She's holding this fire here. Like, first of all, I wouldn't have the stick glowing at all. Like, you just don't need this. If you're going to do this, keep it to a simple two-source thing, like colder light on the back and warmer light on the front. Let's not get crazy here, okay? And secondly, these horns are very monochromatic. So there's this bright orange light here that doesn't seem to be doing much of anything to the horns, and I don't really see any shadow behind them or in them, whereas if this bright flame was here, the tops of all of these would be cast in deep, dark shadow because there would be this super light pushing up on them, right? Uh, at the same time, we've got some of this green up here, but then we're also using this green down in her dress. If she was all in neutral tones and then the color was being infused through the lighting, then it would be a much more readable piece, right? 
we also need to refine the individual elements more, the deeper shadows. Like she's holding a fire here, she has this bust, this corset piece, and yet there's not shadows cast deeply underneath it. If there's a light right here, or there's a shadow here, this is a deep shadow on the other side of like my apron or whatever, you know? Like if I put my apron up here, you see that shadow that's on my neck? That's not there on your on your piece, right? And I don't even have, I'm not holding a, a magical ball of fire. I'm just in the lighting of my room. So that's the kind of thing that you want to work on. Okay, next up, uh, Mikkel, um, precision and brush, con brush control, mini's quite small. Uh, yeah, I mean, so my answer is it's just the kind of thing you need to work on over time. I know that's a really crappy answer, man, and I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, I, I don't love painting super small figures for just this reason, frankly. I don't paint anything smaller, basically, than most GW stuff in a heroic, like, 32 mil scale. I just find it unrewarding. Uh, but that being said, if you're going to and you want to work on it, then yes, it's brush control. It comes with the muscle memory and the time. And good, sharp brushes. Um, so, you know, having a nice size 0 and a size 1 sable brush that you can trust and that you can work with, having a steady hand, and slowly refining it over time and learning how to just apply the paint in exactly the right dilution that you need. Um, you know, that is that is really some of the challenges. Uh, and overall, it does look kind of rough, right? There's some areas where it's clear we could blend it out a little more. Now, the fire here is a little more successful than the last piece we looked at. Um, you still got a little too much orange, like you actually put this like orange dabby here, here. You could soften that up a little bit. Fire doesn't actually really make things glow orange unless it's a very, <laughs> under very specific circumstances. Like... Google people sitting by a fire at night, they're not all orange. Like, they're not all this color orange. Humans don't turn this color orange sitting next to a fire at night, right? They're just lit. They're lit with a very warm yellow light uh, because that's what color fire gives off, right? Um, so for the most part, though, what you're talking about is infusing those tones into something. That's what you want to be doing. Uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, Michael. All right. Next up, Joe. Uh, first submission, first attempt at anything beyond washes and dry brushing. One thing that was successful and one thing to focus on. Sure. So, I mean, as with most new folks, my main piece of uh, direction for you is going to be on contrast. Uh, your contrast on on your red here looks rather nice. I think you did a good job there um, at doing that now, but we need to increase the contrast on kind of everything else. Um, the skin is flat. I would also stay away from this blue. Like, these blue straps did not need to be blue. Avoid colors like this in places like that. You have a highly saturated color sitting in two places unbalanced. That's problematic. So, these would, like, this piece would look a lot better if these were just gray or brown or, you know, any kind of neutral tone rather than a color. Um, but the contrast on, like, his skin and uh all that that's what we need to up. like i need more contrast of value that is to say lighter colors and shadow colors i also need more contrast of hue especially on the skin so introduction of red tones purple tones things like that into the skin to breathe life into them okay uh but welcome glad you submitted and uh i hope that's helpful uh next up uh nako with uh wanted to have this thing have a bright light source on the front and not as bright in the back uh, sure. So I think this piece looks nice overall. If we've got a bright light source in the front, then one of the things that happens with non-metallic gold, which is what you've got going on here, is that you will get very bright light catches, which you have not captured. Like, your brightness up here does not come high enough on this big banner piece he has. When my gold ring is showing directly at light, you see that big light catch that's moving around there? That's the high reflection of polished gold, right? This has, you have nothing on here that's that color, right? Look at those white dots. Nothing on your piece hits that level of reflection, okay? That's how you sell lights coming in strongly on a piece of gold when you have bright reflections. Now, that being said, uh, looking at the back, you've dimmed the gold, but that's not what would happen necessarily. What would You'd still have reflection points. They would just be smaller volumes, Metal and less light still reflects. It just reflects smaller amounts, right? Like, that is to say, it, the, the volumes of light reflection shrink. The more lights are all around you, the more the metal's bouncing and shiny and stuff like that. If you take chrome armor, 
you put it into a room that's you know mostly darker at night there's going to be lots of shadows but it'll still have points where that chrome has reflected a, you know a pure version of whatever the light source is that's around it right so when you're in shadow shadow is generally done especially in this case since you're using warm highlights by the introduction of deep blue um, so dark blue blacks um, and that introduction creates shadow colors so like if you're going to try to do a singular light source like all the front is lit and the back is cast in shadow then you need to infuse that blue black into all your colors and bring them down and the whole back needs to fall into shadow it's a tough thing to sell I honestly don't recommend it for gaming pieces because that's not actually the light they're going to be under, right? Whenever you try to do complicated lighting setups with gaming pieces, that's not actually where they live. A gaming piece sits here on my table and there is a normal light setup of light bouncing around all over the place. And so he's going to pick it up and be like, why is it so bright in the front and so dark in the back? I don't get it. Because they're not looking at it as though that's what's going on, right? That Those kind of lighting things work really great on display minis where you can control the viewing angles and things like that it's harder with gaming stuff so hope that helps okay next up juan francisco gonzalez hidalgo great man great channel and uh greatest name in the pmp uh putting out this girl right here uh sure so he did a video on this uh, it was pretty great uh and his main ask here was on the skin tones by the way sorry um uh the skin and musculature yeah, so my main feeling here, Juan, is that uh, I still don't feel like we've... I mean, obviously, she's far more, uh, like, muscularly defined than a lot of female figures you see. But where I feel like we're still missing is we don't have enough of those soft pink and red tones uh, integrated into the, into the musculature. Um, you've got a, a good amount of contrast, but I still don't feel like there's enough... Like, when I look at my hands... Look at all this pink that's in there, right? There's a lot of blue, too, because of the light I mean, lighting that I'm under. And it's the same with my arms, and, you know, there's a lot of pink in the human body, right? Especially with the, the skin tone you've gone for here, which is quite fair, uh, when exposed to the light, there, there would be pink there. So I think having some soft uh, applications of, like, if the goal with her was to, again, stick to all contrast paints, then something like the the pink or the purple versions of those i can't remember vulpus whatever i don't remember their exact names magos purple maybe and vulpus pink let's say sure anyways introduction of like very soft glazes of those uh would i think go a long way to increasing the visual interest there so there's my take for you all right next up uh ewan skaven warp fire thrower uh very happy with the result of this piece especially the non-metallic and the smoke uh, look for some feedback on the OSL and the color choices. Uh, yeah, smoke looks good. It, I could have told you that came from Sam. I remember that tutorial very well. I know exactly what you're talking about. I think the non-metallic's good. It needs to be smoothed out a little, but it's it's not bad at all. Uh, yeah, I think the OSL is mostly fine. It's quite busy. You may want to soften some of it just a little bit. Uh, like, some of it's really strong and intense, and you probably want to wheel that back just a bit. Like... That is to say, you want to make it so there's... That green is there, but it's an infusion. It's a cast light. Like, these guys aren't sitting in shadow. Again, this is the thing with OSL. Like, everybody wants to do OSL, but OSL is really hard to sell. Because, um, you know, I'm in a brightly lit room right now. I have nothing around me that makes light. But if I had a lighter and I struck it, it would not really change the lighting composition of my face, even though I'm two inches from an open flame, right? So... If these guys are in a cave, then we need a whole different lighting situation where the light could be that dominant, right? Where it was, it would be mostly the light would be lit by the light source, by the motivated light source. They would be green, and then everything else would be in deep shadow or, or minor blue reflected lights or something like that. But if they're you, you've highlighted them like they're in light, like there is existing light. And so if that's the case, if they're out walking around in the daylight, which is what you've told me because you put highlights here that aren't motivated by the green light source, then these greens should be softer and more subtle and not have as big of an expression. So there you go. Uh, next up, Andrew. Uh, basically looking for feedback on the damage and weathering. Sure. Uh, as well as anything else. So I'll give you a... a, a the damage and weathering looks fine. That's my short answer. I actually think it looks quite good. Um, I don't really have any other feedback for you there. 
Um, I think it looks great. You can tighten some of those up, but it feels pretty random. Um, it feels uh, nice, dirty, chipped, like the underlights. All that feels good, man. So, yeah, I, good to go there. So I'll give you a bonus piece of feedback. Um, we need to increase the contrast on the yellow before we get into the battle damage. So that can often mean soft glazes of colors like a rust color or a light brown, something like that. Uh, and integrating those tones into the yellow in a stronger way. Uh, the yellow itself also needs to be uh, separated a little more, like where these pieces, these various plates, are coming together. We need stronger lines of panel separation between everything. Those are actually the things that jumped out at me. So there's your there's your bonus items. All right. Next up, Robin uh, submitted an untamed beast last month. Practicing skin tones was told to push the contrast. Here's the new attempt. Uh, sure. He said he's struggling a bit with the thighs. Uh, and I feel they should be in shadow a bit from the upper body. Uh, sure. Okay. So let's take a look. We're actually going to spin around to the front view here. Oh, I spun too far. Okay. So we're getting there. This is good. Um, when we look over, when I look over it, the areas where I'm not seeing enough contrast is in things like the knuckles. She's gripping something. Right? If you grip something really tightly, your knuckles stand out. Right? They catch light. Right? See the difference there compared to what the lower part? Like the knuckles are red up here and bright on the top. Right? So more contrast in things like that making sure the top of these muscles are well lit. The face especially. I'm not going to worry about the leather because I did read your note there. But like making sure things like the ridge line, the T-line, it's tough on her because she has this dumb strap down the center of her face that really ruins the highlight section of the mini. Um, but like I think this side works for me. Uh, although we still feel like we need a little more variation of hue. So again, the integration of some more soft pink and red tones I think is what I'm missing here. Uh, they can be subtle. They can be glazes. You also want to make sure you don't have the muscles completely unconnected. This is one of the, the big challenges. Like working skin is this fun, never ending journey because yes, you got to establish the contrast, but then you've also got to soften the contrast to connect them. It's tricky. Uh, where the muscle ridges come up and connect, like this part should have not be in as deep a shadow and should have a little bit more of a connection to it. Same with the back here, same with up here, right? So being able to then balance that all out is actually quite a journey. Um, when you get to define muscle structure, because there needs to be areas that fall into shadow, but also the muscles need to connect. Okay, they can't all just be their own little islands of color. Uh, otherwise, it will f feel false. So, there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, Amy, uh, looking for feedback on my cultist firebrand. Uh, sure. So you know, you had said how we get to competition level. Let's you know that's probably a lot um you know competition is is a whole different thing let's just keep it to how we take our next steps um i like what you've got going on here uh it's nice um i like the the work on the um the face the war points war paint uh as well as the texture and stuff like that you're doing on there i mean the, the piece is looking good now what do we what would i recommend we do uh, well, a couple things. One, get this Ferrari red out of your fire. Fire doesn't turn Ferrari red. That's number one. Um, fire is orange and and then to, to orange, red, brown. It's not uh, ever Ferrari red. Um, to the, you know, on some of these uh, blends and stuff, we, you know, I can see we're going for texture. That's fine. It's still too rough, like that shadow. These, some of these transitions are still rough. You can have texture, but there still needs to be a smoothness to it. The texture needs to continue. So you want to smooth that out. The muscle structure on him, again, basically see everything I just said for the last review, the last figure, and uh, and, and carry that through here too. The integration of additional tones. Uh, you don't have enough highlights on your skin. Uh, it should be pushed up a little, um, but also smoothed out. Like so The highlights feel almost dusty, I guess is what I would say where they need to get smoothed down into more natural tones uh, and, and still have like the small highlights, like especially darker, like African skin needs to have these nice uh, 
small volume highlights on it that show uh, that the skin has, you know, like oil and, and a reflectiveness to it. Skin is naturally satin, right? And so that's how we capture that. All right, so I hope that helps. All right, so let's keep going. All right, next up. So, Damien, uh, first Nurgle model. Just want to get some feedback and tips to make it even more disgusting. Sure. So, I mean, one of the problems here is we're, we're just too samey. Um, you know, I, I get what you're going for, but we've got to separate the elements of this more. Okay? So, we've got to have... Um, we've simply got to have the skin separated from the armor separated from the rest of the stuff and right now they just aren't that's the problem so when we're when you're dealing with this kind of uh figure i mean this is um this is one of those things that uh you know darren did a whole uh basically you know tutorial around i don't know it was this guy or it was a guy you know similar to this i think it was a different nurgle guy but they're all pretty similar so, like, you want to have the skin still be skin-toned and just, you know, have lots of infusions of green and purple into it. Because, like, right now it just all appears too similar. It's less disgusting because it doesn't look at all real, right? If you're trying to make something disgusting, it needs to feel like it's human and then a rotted human, right? If it's in sort of all these bright, saturated colors that don't really feel like anything, then it doesn't feel doesn't feel scary or disgusting it just feels like a green guy right so when you're dealing with nurgle the key is it's actually rather hard because you have to paint well and then paint messy and disgusting on top of that but you have to start from something that looks whole and then infuse it with the the different elements so for example like the skin here should be normal skin tone the armor should have some kind of color to it. That should arguably be the green and then have heavy and then so on and so forth. But now we've got to infuse green and purple tones through glazes and stippling and all sorts of other stuff into the skin to make it look rotten or putrescent. I've got to take the armor and introduce browns and oranges and stuff like that through rust and streaking and grime, right? So that's how those elements can be best manipulated. So hope that helps. Uh, ben Worth, um was aiming for tabletop on this one um sure so i mean it it's fine for a tabletop paint job i mean if you're talking about like what would we need to do i mean the answer is contrast on everything like i understand you're taking him and you know sort of playing him as a Citan or whatever i'm surprised their base is that small i thought Citan had bigger bases but maybe not i don't know um you know like it's perfectly fine to that regard but if we're going to try to step up, I mean, it's more contrast in the blue, certainly more contrast in the red, um, the, all the earth and stuff you've got down here. I'm generally not a fan of, like, bases that overwhelm the guy, and these are very, very separate things. Like, this is all brown, this is all blue, never the twain shall meet, right? And so when your basing element is just, like, completely separate from the, the figure, it feels very disjointed, and that's what's happening here. So, you know, if you could integrate colors of what's down here into up here and vice versa right that's you want to draw the piece together in some way um and yeah in addition to that just you know really stepping up the contrast on all the various pieces like having the blue go brighter show more having the skin have more interesting tonal variation both of contrast and of value in it and then finally the fire which is probably the biggest area like i assume this is all supposed to be flame it's really flat it's the part of this that is the most flat and kind of could actually be something interesting but right now it's just kind of this red color. And so like, I would recommend turning that into real fire. Um, and that would be a nice positive there. Hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Kartik. Uh, skin tones and NMM, one of the armors look worn and not highly polished while still reading as metallic. Sure. Um, so it doesn't look non-metallic metal. So a lot of times what people think is, okay, if I'm going to do worn non-metallic metal, then I don't make it shiny. I don't run the same contrast, but that's not correct. Okay. What that, all that does is make something look like, it looks like he's wearing space wolf armor. It just doesn't look metal. Okay. Um, it looks like he's wearing like enameled blue gray armor, which is fine. It's a perfectly fine. Look, but it doesn't look metallic. Even old metal, unless we're talking about, like, something that's truly rusted, shines. It just shines in a smaller volume. That's what I talked about earlier. 
okay? So if you've got iron, there's still going to be, it's still metal. There's still a point of light reflection there. It's just going to be very small, right? Where the it doesn't have these huge bracing reflections because it's not, you know, polished steel or chrome that's reflecting all the colors and lights and bounce of everything in the world. It's only reflecting the brightest light, okay? But it's still metal. So the key is when you're trying to make worn metal out of a non-metallic, then it still needs to come high enough. And the gold doesn't contrast here high enough either. It needs more one and more five. Um, again, one being the brightest, two, three, four, five being the darkest. And just as a way to talk quickly about do you need more highlights or more shadows. Um, the Generally, the way you want to capture worn metal is old or worn metal is pitted. And so you use a lot of stippling to uh, create the, um, you use a lot of stippling to create the, uh, the sort of patterning to make it feel rough. Like there's darkness overlaid with light and then you stipple into a very small area of high highlight, okay? So uh, there you go, hope that helps. I do think the skin, by the way, is, is very successful. Love the infusion of the red tones, purple tones, a little bit of blues in there. I actually think the skin looks fantastic. He looks cold. Um, that like That's exactly what happens when your skin goes cold. You go flush because your, your body rushes blood into your capillaries to try to keep your skin from dying. Uh, so that really sells to me. So very well done there. Okay, uh, next up, Lucas. Um, so talking about uh, non-metallic metal and the glaze skin. So the skin looks okay. It needs to be pushed up higher. We don't have quite enough contrast there, um, but like we need some more well-defined highlights, but there's not a ton of skin. Um, overall, it it's feeling good. We could still use a little bit more color infusion as well. Once you have higher highlights, then bringing in some softer, more subtle sepia tones or uh, purples and stuff like that, or, or even a deep magenta might be valuable. Now, as to the non-metallic, no, it doesn't really sell. Um, the sword a little bit, um, but the like the rest of it does not. And the issue is, it's just it's there's not enough contrast there. Um, we we have everything kind of being a four. Like the gut plate's a great example. All of this outer ring is just a four. Most of this is a four, and then we jump straight to a two on this highlight. There's like no three in here. There's certainly no one anywhere, and there's very little five, right? If we're non-metallic metal is contrast is king. It has to go from the darkest to the lightest. All you're playing with is how much volume each one of those steps takes up. High polished chrome, your one takes up a lot more of the mini, right? If this is your total surface area, okay, a highly polished chrome, one is like that much, and then two, three, four, five. Okay, or something like that. Very dark metal, this have this much is one. And then two, three, four, five. You know, something like that, right? You can play with the widths of those volumes across the surfaces, but they all still have to be present. Okay? So, there you go. Uh, all right, next up, Antonio. Um, it's a cool project here. We got a little combination of a bust and a miniature for Sub Zero. Um, sure. So this is a neat project, kind of a cool little idea of having the little guy in front of the big guy. Very feels like you're selecting the actual fighter in the game. So that's kind of a cool concept. Um, again, the issue is really on uh, is just contrast across the whole thing, uh, but in slightly different ways. So. When we're dealing with the small guy, we need more contrast in the individual elements there um, and to smooth out some of them, but especially the skin. Um, the skin is the major part, especially his arms and stuff like that is where I, I notice it. The black of his pants just needs to be smoothed out. With the big guy, the problem is we don't have enough variation of, of hue and things like that or texture. You know, this, like, we blew this thing up exactly the same. Like, this thing is so much bigger in scale than the guy he's in front of it yet we basically just have the same blue like it's still the same thing he's just it's some blue and we've got some dark spots in there that kind of look like maybe a wash was put over it or something like that like we can't you can't paint like that on a bust unfortunately like on big scales like that we have to bring out the texture like that jacket at that scale that's so big you can see like the texture in my shirt or the patterns or you know 
the, the you can see the creases in my knuckles right or in my face like where there's individual elements right and so all that stuff needs to be brought out like there's opportunities here in the leather to show scratches, wearing, tearing, indents, texture, cloth types, right? All of that kind of stuff needs to be brought out when you're working in busts. The rule of busts is you do everything you can possibly think of until you're nearly insane, and then you do twice as much as that. Okay, that's the rule for busts. So um, that's your biggest challenge. So there you go. Uh, Dominic, uh, so gonna just roll right into what i just said take everything i just said repeat right the problem we have here is it's too simplistic like this would be great if this was a 28 millimeter size dr doom right and then i'd still say you don't have enough contrast but still we'd be better off at a bus this scale doom has all these beautiful wonderful you know elements to his clothing there's clearly tears here on the edge right so there's texture to the cloth the cloak itself is made of silk or it's you know something like a, a heavy or a heavy wool material or whatever you tell me right the metal can't just be metal like you can't we can't just call that metal and call it a day we've got to like we have to create planes of light shadow take control of the light like look at dr doom in the comics and how much they they'll do with him on when he's you know when you get a full page spread of him or something right uh so uh a lot more contrast, a lot more detail, a lot more texture, all that kind of stuff. So there you go. Uh, always remember, no one judges doom. So uh, next up, one. Uh, wanted to know where to keep going to the next level. Sure. So this guy looks really nice. I like your mega boss on Maw Crusher. I think he did a great job here. Lots of interesting color choices. Uh, lots of infusion of different things going on. Uh, I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed all the time and detail you you clearly took in, in catching out all those little bone spines. I know how much that can take. Uh, the work on the wings. Um, this guy looks really great, uh, I will say. I think if there's anything you could do, it would be on the orc himself. So I've, I've spun to this picture because, honestly, I don't know that I have any feedback on the, the uh, Maw Crusher itself, on the beast. I think he... he sells for me i think he looks really cool i think on this guy we could have done a little more um it feels like we didn't you know he's supposed to be the main selling piece but he's kind of the most boring element of the mini uh like i feel like we could have infused a hue in here like a color had some of his armor plates have something different going on these recesses have some color put in them uh you know a design a check a dag works famously you know do stuff with their armor uh, having the skin have more contrast in it here, um, it's it's a little bit, but it's not far enough. Uh, more infusion of light around his face, introduction of pink and red tones around his nose, his eyebrows, his under his eyes, his lips, you know, so that that way we get that look of like there's some kind of blood under there or something. Um, all of those things, I think, are where we had a missed opportunity. Um, the bones themselves look very samey like again we could have pushed the contrast and really done some big striations or something on them just like stuff to draw us up here this is where i think you've got the opportunity but overall this guy you know he looks great it's a it's a very cool piece uh yeah well done okay next up uh george uh looking for advice on how to paint flesh in a more believable way so i've talked about it a lot during this review uh by the way george finished stuff not you know, kind of, I understand this is the guy at the top. I know he doesn't have a lower part, but, you know, show me the whole, the whole piece. Finished pieces only. Uh, now, as to the skin, I have multiple videos on doing skin. I have a recent video on painting Space Marine faces, on painting faces in great detail. I would recommend you go check that out because that's going to answer your questions here because I use a Space Marine face and I show you how to introduce the various tones. But the answer is is more complicated than I can give here, but the key is with the infusion of tonal variation, both value light to dark, and hue, color, okay? Like, there needs to be more tones, blue around his jaw, red in his cheeks, yellow at the top. That's very broadly stated. It's not like you're actually using those exact straight colors, but those are infus you're infusing color tones, okay? Um, and then, uh, you know, again, then building up the planes of light around the areas of the face that are lit. So go check out that video. It'll explain more. All right, next up, Nicholas Bordas, uh, looking for uh, advice on the volumetric lighting, true metallic metal, and the composition. Sure. So, um, 
compositionally it's rough because you've got two major color items here and they're not really crossing over too much like this guy is really red and this guy is really teal and other than a little bit of the red up on the chair there's and no teal down here they don't really cross together this is one of the challenge when you're you're dealing with you know these kinds of figs right is that you have to figure out a way to bring them together in some fashion so compositionally we've got a challenge now it would be uh better if this ridge or these stripes or some kind of infusion was this same teal as his um you know that could be a way to go right the dino itself could be his teal with the same black stripes right then they would feel more aligned right now they feel very disjunctive compositionally okay now, as far as volumetric lighting goes, we still don't really have it because the under parts here are still not as shadowed as they should be. We're getting better. Um, but like the under part of the dinosaur that is completely shielded from light is still very, very bright, right? Like up here under his tail is still just as bright as anything up here. Okay. Like this color and this color are still pretty much the same color. Um, the lower part of this, like a little more shaping and stuff around the muscles and things of that nature, right? Where we're infusing those shadows a little more. Now, as to the TMM, um, same thing. We need to take more control of the light. So stronger additions of, um, of inks and things like that. And then to, to create shadows and that sort of thing. And then uh, more addition of silvers and things to to highlight those. Now, I can see where you are doing that some, and so we're, we're getting somewhere. Uh, we're not, it's it's not zero here, okay? Um, but we've got to be smooth. I mean, part of the problem is I uh, that it feels like some of the metal paint is a bit rough. I don't know what metal paint you're using, but it feels a bit rough. Um, the, uh, so, you know, but like, when you have it up here, like these parts are just kind of dark, but they're just, it's just like a big area of dark and then kind of a normal gold and then a big area of dark. Like, I get what you were going for. You're trying to show a reflection in the middle. But that doesn't feel like how that reflection would work, right? Like, the individual elements would be picked out, would have, should have edge highlights on them. There could be dark here and dark here, you know, or something like that. Or the top could be dark and then it could cascade into some light and then you could have some additional shadow here. Like, it has to feel like it's ringing true to how these planes of light would be falling, right? normally and on a flat surface like that that's you know sitting there it's not a it's not a column it's just a flat plane light's going to cascade toward the bottom uh so you know you could have areas of light where it's catching but then again each individual element needs to be edge highlighted and things like that right so good progress um I, you know there's a lot of stuff here i like the colors all look good you're working with them well it's not a question of you're not doing it. It's just a question of you need to put, keep pushing yourself and keep going farther. Like your volumetric lighting is going the right direction. We just need to push it farther. The control of the light and dark on the metal is is pushing, but it needs to go farther. Okay, that kind of thing. All right, next up, Mark. Uh, some thoughts on the cloth and the power sword. Um, sure. So, I mean, the cloth is fine i would push it a little more or think about adding things like texture what it really needs is uh to be smoothed out a little bit you still have some we still have some blends that are a little rough there uh the power sword doesn't work for me um that is to say like i've the you a blue plus just like the white lightning doesn't work um it it's stands out it's a color that isn't in the rest of the composition it doesn't work well with the rest of the composition um, you'd be better off if the sword were either done like a traditional power sword build. So, like, that is to say you had highly desaturated blues going up and down the sides in opposite directions. Um, and then lightning tracing the middle. Or if the sword was a more neutral kind of gray non-metallic, and then you traced a blue lightning up the middle of the power sword. Um, the key with it is it has to be thinner. The lightning has to be, like, really, 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 really thin. No thinner than that. No, it's as thin as you're thinking right now. It's twice as thin as that. Okay? And to do that, that means you need a razor-sharp brush, you need inks, and you need some flow improver to really get in there and and, and get those, and, and very precise brush control to get those hyper-thin lines traced, right? So that's kind of my general thoughts for you. Um, 
uh, as far as like the the cloth goes, it's fine. Like I said, just smooth it out. You could go with smoothing it through texture if you wanted; it would work fine on there. But the power sword, unfortunately, doesn't doesn't sell for me. So, hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Jessica, um, looking for basically feedback on uh, the her scene here and what to use for the highlight on the little critters in the front. Um, sure. I mean, the answer is, you know, you come some of the questions you were asking, Jessica, is like, should I do this with a puddle, all that kind of stuff? That's up to you. That's just elements you can choose to add or not. Um, it, there's not like a some qualitative thing that's going to happen there. What what we've got is, yes, you definitely want to, we need to bring the, the highlights, especially the volumetric highlights on the little animals up, and him, by the way. Just the contrast in general on the piece needs to come up, is my answer. At the same time, watch out for these non-painted pieces, like the mud, the tree behind him, that kind of stuff. You know, you want to make sure that everything has paint on it. Um, so when you're going to, uh, when you're going to put on some piece of a bush like that, it really helps if you have an airbrush and you can go in and actually take control of the light on that thing, because it's just a big ball of green with no definition to it, and that's not how trees are. Trees have lots of light and shadow and stuff like that, right? Um, the his green and the uh, the cloak and things like that, as well as the little critters, you need to both come up and deepen the shadow some. Like we need to stretch the contrast in general. We have them just too much existing in like basically the three and maybe a little bit of two space is kind of where they're at right now. So we just need to push all of that in general. Uh, so I hope that helps, Jessica. Cool scene. Okay, next up, Daniel. Uh, feedback on the visual cohesiveness of the color scheme and how you can improve the skin. Sure. So on this big, bad Nurgle boy here, um, he's nice and gross. We're just going to go around to the front of him because that's the easiest place to look. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. You're... Color-wise, you're pretty balanced. You've got the, you know, bright green on both sides, his, like, right arm and his left arm. Um, the um, the uh, the skin itself is pretty wonderful. I love the pushing to the texture and the dots at the high level, which makes it look nice and sickly. Um, I think you could push that even a tiny bit farther uh, up at the very highest highlights, have some really weird like white dots in there or something. The sort of pustules and things like that are pretty dead on. Um, I think where you've got some opportunity for improvement is namely in the bones. They don't seem to have enough uh, tonal variation in them, so tracing them more with some striations or something like that, uh, or bringing down the very bottom parts of them darker, I think would be where I would go if I was you. But overall, this guy's really good. It's great work, man. All right, next up, uh, Gary. Vince, this is my first real attempt at OSL. Um, sure. So, I mean, this is going to be a rough piece, Gary. Uh, I, I do not like the central figure at all, and what you're aiming for is does not work. Um, I assume what you're going for is an inner heat. That is not what's captured here. He just looks like a big bumblebee. Um, I'm not going to be not trying to be mean. I just want to be straight with you, man. Okay, and that's because that's not how inner heat... <coughs> looks <coughs> it doesn't work like that like if you've got something that would have i mean i you know lava within it which is what you're ostensibly trying to to, to replicate here right um like if you google pictures of lava it's not lines of yellow and then black okay so this would have to be way thinner like the light and the heat needs to be way thinner and more of it needs to be black with like bits of OSL of the light creeping out over the black because that heat, that light is going to escape and naturally tone the edges, uh, red, orange, stuff like that. Now, as to the light cast on the wings, yeah, that's fine. That actually works fine. Like if this guy was just painted like a normal demon, okay, and you were just asking me about, and you just gave him a fire whip and a fire sword and cast some of this light onto the wings, I would have been like, yeah, that's fine with me. Again, it's a little too orange. Like, I know everybody thinks orange fire casts orange light. It really doesn't, I promise. <laughs> Especially not in a... Like, if it's the only light that's around, if you're in a dark cave and you strike an orange torch, then yes, you can have some softly orange-infused tones, right? 
but it's still going to be mostly yellow infused tones. So like the stuff that works for me is like up here, stuff like that. This is all working. That I have no issue with. The one of the problems though is we've just got too much bright yellow in here and not enough orange in the actual fire itself. That's where the orange should be. Orange fire casts a yellow, a soft yellow infused glow. Okay. Um, so at any rate, uh, and that's because your skin tone is already orange. Like that's generally what's happening when you're a human sitting next to a fire. Um, on the whole, the reflection on the wings is rather nice. I like how you deepen the shadows and stuff like that. The only part that doesn't work for me is the main demon. Like when I cover him up and just look at the wings, I really like him. I, again, I push it a little more into the yellow. You've got a little too much, especially like up on this wing right here. There's way too much orange, way too much orange. These should be more yellow infused. But other than that, I like where you chose to place your, your light catches and your shadows. I think those all work. Uh, I just think it's this guy that doesn't work. So hope that helps. All right, next up. Uh, Dane, I guess. I don't know. Danae? I'm not sure. Uh, it says normally paints quite dark drab colors um and trying to do something bright and saturated um sure so i mean the issue here is we just don't have enough contrast i appreciate the push to bright colors but again my main pushback would be contrast everything here is it's nice it's bright but it's all uh it's all basically simultaneous it's all you know one color um like when you're using lime green it's very overwhelming like there's nothing drawing me to this guy's face his hair being the same color as his face is very strange um you know, you want there to be some kind of separation there. They can both be in the same tone, but there should be something pushing that to be hair. Um, he needs a lot more highlights. He needs a lot more shadows. The green needs a lot more shadows. The green probably is already a number one. That's where you'd want to end at. Um, but you need to go darker. Same with, like, the wood and the weapon. So Contrast is king. And uh, I like the push toward brightness, but these things will seem brighter and more... Uh, luminescent if you have more shadows a white dot is never as bright as when you put it against a black backdrop okay uh all right next up jim uh the goal was slightly weathered dark gray armor not highly reflective uh sure um yeah i mean i think it's fine it, if your if your goal was kind of a nice tabletop paint job then i think you're you're good um yeah, looks nice. Uh, I mean, obviously, if we're if you're just looking for the gray, I think that's that's fine. I think the issue is probably as much with the sculpt as it is with anything else. Um, drill out your gun barrel. Um, always drill your gun barrel. Um, clean up this flash that's on the end of the gun. You know that kind of stuff. Like, I think my main push would be mostly on just cleanliness of, of paint job. You've got some stuff here that's a little messy that needs tighter separations between everything, more well-defined lines, those kinds of things. Uh, like your lettering up here is a little messy, that kind of stuff. But if you're aiming for tabletop, I think it's it's perfectly fine. So, yeah. Okay. Next up, Camille. Uh, while making this unit, I tried a few new things like chipping OSL and colored metallics. I have the biggest problem with the last thing. I spent many hours mixing paint and metallic medium to get a nice olive green... Uh, what I can be satisfied of. On the palette, the color was almost perfect, but after applying it on miniatures, it lost the olive look a little bit. Is it only a matter of highlights and shadows and armor? Maybe it's problematic metallic medium added to paint. Yeah, I mean, so my answer is I never add metal medium to paint because I think it actually always just looks like garbage is my short answer. It's not a good product. Metal mediums are, in general, full of horrible, awful, gross, giant pigment. It just makes... It's great if you want to make a glitter-infused color. So if your goal is to make your figs look like they're strippers, then Metal Medium is an A-plus product for that. Beyond that, it has no purpose. Um, if you want a metal-infused color, then you then you should look to my video that I have on doing colored metallics, uh, wherein you're using things like Vallejo Metal Color and uh, either mixing in a color or putting a color over top. And... The reason I say that is because then what you're able to do is create your contrast with the existing metallics first and then just glaze over the top of them. By the by, um, Call to Paint has an excellent recent video on undershading where they talk about undershading with metallics as well. And it's the same 
same principle I would employ and, and talk about in my video. So um, you can check that one out as well. Uh, you know, ultimately, like, they're going to look different. And, you know, we still need more contrast here. When you, The problem is when you're mixing a perfect flat color like this, perfect, then you it just ends up making the fig look flat because, like, that whole flag is one color, right? That whole shield is one color. There's no contrast. There's no life to it. It doesn't matter how cool of a color it is. It's flat, right? So you're better off if you actually paint in the metals first and then took some kind of green over the top of it through a contrast paint or something like that, right? Um, or if you wanted to paint it directly, you could also just infuse some kind of appropriate green into something like a Vallejo metal color. Then at least you have nice small pigment. But in general, you still then have to infuse the normal tones. You have to increase your black or your deeper part of a color to get shadows, and you have to then bring up the silver quotient as part of it to get to the high highlights, right, where it's reflecting light. Working with metals, with colored metals, is actually really, really hard and very, very, very easy to make it look really bad. Okay, so my advice is travel this road with great care. Um, your your best bet is if you can work something where you're where you're setting your gradient first and then putting a single tone over top of it. But it is it's it's not an easy road to to walk. So I hope that helps. Uh, Christopher, uh, trying to learn glazing and working at smooth transitions. What can you do to improve this? Uh, well, my short answer is going to sound really trite, but it's keep, keep going. You're doing great. Um, so, you know, when I look at this again, we don't have enough contrast. Like the guy himself is very flat, the, the space Marine himself, but I don't think that's where you're focused on. Um, my guess is you're talking about like the cloak and the sword. So that's fine. Um, I think the sword looks nice. I think the cloak is soft um but this is far too yellow like white doesn't shade with yellow um in that way white shadows with grays basically because that's what it looks like when it's out of the light um you know you don't hold a white t-shirt i've never seen a white t-shirt that i that i uh put on and suddenly the under my arm was brown right i mean maybe if i sweat a whole bunch but, like, that's just not how white works, right? Um, and if you're talking about a cream-colored cloth, it still doesn't turn yellow. So you want to be careful with those kind of color infusions, right? Because it just makes it look dirty. Uh, the green guy himself, like, he needs more contrast, more highlights. So I'd say keep going, keep practicing. Certainly it looks nice. You're you're certainly getting the, the glazing process. Now you've just got to keep pushing that contrast. The metals, the yellow, the green itself, the black back here, all that needs to be pushed. Okay. All right. Next up, uh, Johan with uh, big old, uh, big old uh, Cthulhu. Yeah. So this is interesting. Um, cool piece. He's super big. Certainly looks like he's set at night. Uh, I enjoy that. Um, you know, it's. Uh, a little bit more of the in, the details could be picked out down here, like the boat kind of really blends in to the to the um, uh, to the coastline. And like I understand that at night in darkness and moonlight, things all you know it removes the colors from our sight. I too am a uh, big fan of the song, but um, you know at the same time we want a, a little bit more, uh, maybe some kind of color sticking out there, like he did with the lighthouse. Honestly, where I. Um, I thought that stood out rather nicely, actually, because that just that little infusion of, of green there actually made a big difference. So just, again, something like that that would infuse the, the boat in some way. Um, I think Cthulhu himself looks good. It's pretty simple uh, as far as the execution on him. Uh, I think if you were going to go to the next level, we'd want to be more attentive with the details. So, like, there's a lot of... He, he feels kind of airbrushed right now, and if you wanted to, uh, you know, put more time into it, it would be bringing out micro textures and things like that. Like this dude is as a point of fact, huge. Um, like that's a regular lighthouse, I assume. So he's not attacking a toy boat and a toy lighthouse, which would be funny if he was, if this was like Cthulhu in the bathtub, that would very much make me laugh. But, um, you know, it, he's so big that there's going to be lots of texture and things that we can see here, having the individual texture in his arms, things like that picked out these, these scales and things would be, you know, catching moonlight there'd be textures and scratches and things on top of his head where I see this texture in his tentacles. Those would have more light and shadow and, you know, more red purple tones. 
in the you know in the shadow underneath it and stuff like that that's what you would want to push to so there you go hope that helps all right ben uh restricted in color scheme uh the primary black and gray due to how the model is sculpted uh i went with highlighting close to the edge of each square but not sure if there was a better approach um sure so i mean the fig isn't doing you any any benefits here a lot of the DD figures that are out there just aren't good um you know so when we're talking about how do we highlight this kind of a situation well the answer is you have to think volumetrically right and so there's going to be a general pattern of light across the whole thing if they're meant to be literal pieces quilted together then there should be a shadow where they come together and then light up on the top, right? So you can you can fake that that effect by shadowing the bottom side and highlighting the top, right? So it feels like it's uh, there's raised and lowered areas there, and that's ultimately what I'd recommend if you're going for that. Now the other thing you can do is bring out texture, right? So you can get in there with a sharp brush and you can give it individual, you know, kind of crosshatch texture or something like that in there and that will be a way to sort of make it more interesting but honestly the the cloth is the part that i think looks okay to me like you mentioned the you know this big flat thing on the front again that's where you could just do some texture put in a little design put a symbol on there do something to just kind of distract and then other than that rely on the volumetric highlighting where it would be you know kind of brighter at the bottom honestly is what should be happening there and, and darker up here um but at the same time, where I see the most opportunity here is actually with the steel. The guy's wearing a lot of metal, and he doesn't have... Uh, the steel itself needs some more love as far as, you know, things being carefully shaded, each individual element being picked out, more control of the light on the metal parts from a volumetric perspective, especially when I look at a piece like this back here, right? Like, this all just feels steel and there's not like that much going on that's like why isn't this in more shadow why isn't this in a mid-tone this should be highlighted this should be a highlight this should be highlight. i mean you can see the actual light from your desk or whatever so like follow that and and then this should have a big shadow across the middle of it because i got light here and light here so shadow and shadow and light and light or something like that you know uh, being kind of the idea but you want to create that take control of that light over the metal paint i think that's actually your biggest opportunity there ben so hope that helps Alan, uh, directed practice following last month. Uh, no, it needs a lot of smoothing, but focusing on light placement values on NMM. Uh, yeah, I looked over this earlier, and I think this is great. The hammer probably needs to have its light volumes expanded a little. Uh, but on the non-hammer pieces, uh, same with actually the shield parts, like these, the volumes on your uh, the shield are a little too small. So your one and two are a little too small. I understand you're probably going for darker metal, cool beans, but they still need to be expanded a little. And then, yeah, most of it's just smoothing. The parts I thought were really successful was especially like the shoulder pad, the, um, sorry, we'll go back here. This thing in bobber here, don't forget there's going to be a light on the bottom too. It's not just the top. Non-metallic isn't just light on the top, shadow underneath. That's not non-metallic, that's cloth. Metallic is highly reflective, meaning there are bounce lights and secondary lights. There needs to be another reflection underneath here, okay? So on cylindrical surfaces, it's going to go like light, medium, dark, medium, light, you know, that kind of thing. All right. So there you go. But yeah, overall, I, I think your, your placement's good. Uh, like a lot of the edges, good light catches. I think you're really, you're really working with light catches well, and I think those do a lot to sell it. So yeah, good stuff. All right, next up, Greg. Uh, entry for a local competition. Uh, Bones figure is the only model permitted to be entered. Looking for feedback on the cloth skin and general thoughts on improvement. Sure. So um, I like the little soft green glow. The skin's not bad. Um, I would like it's it's uh, you've got some nice infusions of color in here. We do need more more hue. So more pink uh, and soft magentas and purples and stuff like that, especially on female figures. That goes a long way. Uh, I like the subtle green that's cast on the on the leg and stuff there. That works okay for me. Um, the hair needs to be smoothed out some. Like your your individual lines need to be thinner, sharper, and smoothed more in how they're uh, in how they're transitioning, and then have multiple areas. So there needs to be one not only here around the crown of the head, but then also out here on the lighter parts. Um, the wings are something I noticed where. Uh, when you're doing, I, I would avoid this, like the, the black pieces, 
that's way too strong for that as far as a contrast it doesn't like it's a bad design overall like just this is not a good sculpt right there but that being said it's not doing it any favors because now it looks like you've got like um like a lit piece of paper with some wood in front of it or something you know like there's a like there's a cast light behind a japanese paper wall or something right you don't want the contrast to be that strong between the two of these um it needs to feel more natural right so um the extension could be uh if I, I also there needs to be like contrast in the wings themselves I need to make sure in these kinds of areas we don't get messy whenever we've got this yellow and black like down here this just looks messy right over here on the side i'll show you here this part this just looks messy like we didn't get it all the way filled in right now if the whole thing was like this where it was actually softly glazed over and it looked like there was a darker piece hidden under the yellow skin i'd actually like it a lot okay but the key is we got to pick a lane here okay so if this was all just this subtle glazing like you've got here and all of these were like this soft tone that it looked like there was something trapped around it and there was a darker piece inside yeah man i'd be all about that uh, i would love that but that's kind of i think where i'm at hope that helps cool piece though uh john uh tyranid warrior found this piece very challenging trying to incorporate your advice on pushing contrast shadowed areas struggle to push the contrast on the skin any overall tips yeah i mean more contrast on the skin it's it's just the answer is more contrast buddy i mean you knew it was when you said it to me uh this color up here is the same as this color here this color is the same as this 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 it's you know the score here man i've talked about contrast a lot um i don't mind all the little stippling it's a bit uh be care a little careful with your color choices because it looks more like he's a pinata full of party favors than it does like he's a scary alien monster it also looks like we need to thin our paint some more like our paint application feels a little thick here in some places so i'd be wary of that but yes we need to like just coming in here with an airbrush and shooting a, a, a like a very thin Payne's gray up directly from the bottom of him would improve his look like 30 percent just being completely uh just you know not even like any kind of detail that would just do a huge de a huge amount right there okay uh so because that's what i mean there's just no shadow life there so hope that helps all right dwight uh suggestions on how to strike a balance between picking out details and actually getting models like this finished yeah sure so, I mean, the answer is it's really annoying because they have a lot of stuff like this where it's just super detailed. And the answer is you do as much or as little as you want, man. It's your it's your model. You don't need I don't you don't need me to tell you what it's okay or not to do. What's your goal? If your goal is tabletop, you're fine. You're there. No issue at all. If your goal is something else, then you keep going and you keep pushing yourself. There's not like some kind of magical right place to balance things. It's about what your particular goals are and if you're having fun painting it. You know, I talk a lot about, I mean, I know I spent all this time saying this would be your next step, this would be your next step. That has a hidden assumption that you care or that you're inclined to spend the time to put it up to the next step because that's your, that is your goal. If that's not your goal, if your goal is a simple tabletop painted thing that's ready to go, then you're good. Now, on crap like this, where you've got like all these little bejangles and bejingles and stuff, you know, things like oil washes, you, you gotta think about time saving, right? So you think about like, how much can I do with undershading and then glazes over the top where I can just get it done fast. So I zenithal it and maybe dry brush the whole model. And then I, you know, one good thin contrast over here or with contrast glaze or something like that or an ink over. And that piece is done and that piece is done and that piece is done. And then, you know, maybe I do an oil wash on something like the big scrap piece where it's got all this junk in it, right? So I just uh, paint it all metal apply a big oil wash and then i go in and i pick out a few pieces rust stipple dab so it just looks like a bunch of junk but then there's individual elements that are separated it's not like you have to go in and paint every single one you can trick the eye right because if there's a bunch of metal but then you go in and you pick out some of them with they're more rusted and you put some brown and then orange and you make some you put in some gold or some copper here or there all of a sudden it looks really super varied right and again, this piece, I don't think, is going to end up for competition. It's just about, like, you having a cool scrap launcher for your ogre army. So in which case, then, that's fine. So there you go. That's my, my overall advice. I, I hope that helps. Uh, oh, as far as color composition goes, I mean, there's just... 
it's fine. I, there's not much you can do with color composition on a thing like this. It's mostly neutrals and metals. Like, you have almost no colors in this piece. There is no color composition to this. The The color composition is for goblins. Um, they are such a minimal part of the overall thing, it's not really a concern. If you wanted to infuse it with a bunch of color, you could, but I don't really see a need. I mean, almost everything in this piece is ivory, metal, like steel, brown, or uh, gray. None of those are colors or have any concerns on composition. You can do whatever the heck you want with them because they're just nothing. They're, they're nothing in a color composition. So, there you go. And that's fine, by the way. Again, it's not a bad thing. It's perfectly fine to have things that look are, are largely neutral colors. The little goblins stand out because they're bright colored. Great. Okay, next up, Dave. Uh, Tyro Steel, my skin tones. I think I've nailed it. Would like the feedback on what you do to give the extra touch. Sure, so he's good. Uh, looks really nice. Uh, I What we don't have is the pink that's in Dungeon Master's cheeks. He, ha he She's got little fat cheeks they should have a little pink in them a little blue in our shadows right uh where especially around his ears under his head stuff like that okay uh red and pink down in his hands and his knuckles where again there's always a lot of pink tones and things like that infused so i think you've got the variation of value quite well set here i actually like that a lot you're good on your variation of value we just need more variation of hue uh, by the way, Dave, if you're a fan of Dungeon Master, I hope you have watched the Lost episode that they recently re-recorded of the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon with all new voice actors, and they animated it and everything. Uh, so it actually, they brought in uh, new people, and we were doing their best with all the voices, and um, they somebody actually fan-funded uh, animating the whole last episode. And the last episode is incredible. Uh, I had read the script years ago, and I was so happy to see it finally got made. So, anyways, if you're a big a fan of the D&D cartoon as I am. So, that's just for me and Dave. Or any of you others out there, go check it out. It's wonderful. Uh, okay, James. Uh, want to work on metallics. I'm worried about doing NMM, so I've been doing TMM. How to make my TMM look better. Sure. So, I think this is... Uh, you've got some good stuff going on here. And I looked over it, but again, my advice is going to be much the same as it was to other people. So first of all, the silver infusion here is much too stark. Like you've got to, it's got to be smoothly done. I would recommend you go back and you watch my how to infuse non-metallic metal into true metallic metal videos. It's tougher on this Dracon because he's got a lot of really rough textures. Um, I think he did a nice job with the metals, but yeah, we've got to like get more of the softer tones in there as far as taking control of the shadows and the light and when you get to lights they have to be more smooth transitions into them even through the metal so you mix a little bit of gold into the silver then a little more silver then a little more silver and so on you need silvers around all the edges like all the gold needs to be edge highlighted just like anything else every ridge every edge every everything oh yeah like if you want to take it up the same there's not much different in effort it just naturally looks better uh, when you go the full Monty. Uh, but every edge, every ridge, every piece, every divot, every everything should be edged in silver all the same for the most part or some silver gold infusion. Especially if it's facing towards the light. Like if you don't want to absolutely commit suicide, that's super cool. You know, you can you can, um, you can can make it so that's just like around upper facing edges. But I mean, metals are going to reflect even lower facing edges. So, uh, yeah. Go back, watch those videos, and uh, there's several that I have on it, and that'll, that should help you out. Okay, uh, next up, Luigi. Just the non-metallic metal never ends. Uh, now we're going into the super mode. This is like bonus round. Sky Earth non-metallic metal. Okay, sure. So, um, this is a very tough fig to sell Sky Earth non-metallic metal on because he's full of a lot of other stuff. Okay, um, like there's other things going on. The first thing you want to do with uh, Sky Earth non-metallic metal is really think about all of your shapes and make sure they're well controlled. The second thing you want to make sure is that everything else that's not that is very dark and like I'm not saying you shouldn't have done bright wings like those work fine. But the trick here is is okay. So these, this guy has like, let's flip around here and I'll show you what I mean. 
this guy here has these super bright wings, right? They're this blue and pink color, which I really like. I think that looks gorgeous, by the way. Okay. This guy's armor is chrome, right? Because that's what's being reflected. So why isn't this in his armor, right? Like, where's the blue and pink wings in his armor? Where's the... Let's go back here. Where's this gold being reflected in his helmet? It reaches around. It should be there. Right? Like, this should be not the ground. It should be the gold. This should be reflecting a big pink feather right here and here. Right? Because that's what this is reflecting. Um, Sky Earth is, like, really, really, really complicated. Because you're trying to paint something that's reflecting everything around it. And on a gaming piece like this, you just it's very hard to have the space to tell that story. Now, that all said, okay, um, from the parts that I can tell, yes, it doesn't, it, it feels like most of your earth tone actually, uh, for the most part, works. There's some pieces I can't really see what's going on. There's, it's just kind of too complicated or strange. Like, the shape of this guy is not a favor of this. Like, it really isn't. This guy's Mr. Loopy Swoopy, all different weird shapes and stuff. Like, a smooth space marine storm cast that kind of guy reflects this much better because this dude has so many weird angles it actually wouldn't reflect like this if he was chrome he would just be a riot of colors right because he'd be bouncing everything because it wouldn't just be it's not like it's just one light it hit him here there'd be a bounce off here his hand is in the way this thing he's got a tube coming down all of those are reflecting there's a wing color that's bouncing off there's a wing bouncing off a sword bouncing off his helmet bouncing off his wing again bouncing off of the side right it would just be like crazy color everywhere anyway um now that being said the uh the i think the issue is you need to wheel back the blue amount the sky is still a little too blue infused which sounds strange but the sky of sky earth one of the hardest things to nail is the exact saturation of it and it needs to if it had a little bit more pushed into the gray white tone and off of the blue i think it would look it would sell a little more I think you've got too much of the the blue element here. It's hard for me to tell with the legs. The the gun is the part that sells the best to me. It's the clearest. Like I buy the gun. I don't I have no issue with the gun at all. I actually love the way that thing looks. I think that is top notch. Like nailed it. I would love this dude if he was just more flat and the gun was sky earth not metallic metal. Then you, you know you'd have me. Some pieces of the chest work okay, but it's kind of hard to tell. Um, just because again, there's so many little transitions so quickly. One of the keys is sometimes you've got to like not try to be covering the light, the the, uh, the sky earth horizon on every single piece, right? When you try to do it and like on every single piece, it ends up becoming overwhelming and visual chaos. So sometimes you just want things to be more sky reflected if they're mostly up and then some to be more earth reflected if they're almost completely down. And then the parts that are in the middle tell the story. Just some thoughts there. Hope that helps, Luigi. All right. Next up, Nick. Uh, all right. Tried to push the contrast. Uh, this is the most ambitious project yet. Sure. So, yeah, I looked over this earlier. Um, I mean, the... I'll, I'll give you a couple thoughts. Uh, love the colors and the composition. That's fine. Um, the base is certainly fun. The, the big cave and stuff and him with his hands on there. The biggest issue we have is a lot of the pieces just, and this is what happens on these big pieces like this, they're just not finished, refined enough as they could be. Uh, like, a lot of the transitions on the wings are a little stark, right? Because it's like, there's a hard line between the purple and the red, and the red and the orange, and the orange and the yellow, and the yellow and the white, right? Or ivory, as it were. Um, the gold doesn't really have much life to it up here. The skin is pretty flat and neutral on her. Like, she's the center of this, but it doesn't feel like she's got the same amount of effort put into her there's also a lot of shininess going on in the purple always make sure you're matting this kind of stuff out you don't want unintended shine that's going to always make something look worse because like she's not wearing shiny clothes i guess um but there's a lot of shine to it there um the you know stuff like these bone claws that are just gray they're just base coated you know stuff like that really lets you down right because you don't have any texture or detail there when you've got a lot of stuff going on beyond that it's just mostly then refinement smoothing stuff out you, you know you got a lot of places where we're jumping up in high highlights here i like that fine but we need to smooth the transitions out like this line right here is rough and things like that it's always going to happen with these big monsters unless you want to spend just forever on them 
So my main advice is on just, you know, making sure you, you put the, the effort into the part that really matters, namely her. She's the, she's the goddess in the center of the frame, right? She's the point of this figure. Um, and then, uh, make sure you're establishing all the contrast of not only, uh, tone, but hue on her. And, uh, and then, uh, the, you know, then when you have little refinement stuff on the rest of the piece, it's not really going to matter as much. So there you go. Okay. Next up, Colin, uh, some serious criticism on how I could prove from here. Yeah. I mean, so Colin, my main answer is going to be the same thing I've given most everybody else which is contrast, um, but it's also in separation of elements. Like we don't have enough dark lines celebrating things or separating things. Mm -hmm. So the face is very flat in the color. The red is okay. The red's the one area where it seems pretty decent, but like the problem with the highlights on your green is you have this one and then we just, the rest is all three. It's just all the same thing, right? Like you have one bright color going into here, one bright color and that's it. One bright color and then that. Right, we don't have enough of that. We're also not separating the elements. Like each of these little pieces on these little rivets need to be like separated, dark lined, and then painted metallic or whatever. Right, because that feels like what they should be. Red and green compositionally is also not super great because they're both very saturated colors, so you get this weird Christmas vibe off of it. But when I look at things like the horns or the hair or the face, the skin, the wrappings on here, the wood. Right? None of these have enough contrast or detail. Like that hair is just base coated brown. Right? What we need to be doing is really capturing that out. Um, you know, so compositionally, I think we've got a challenge and that I wouldn't have gone with that green. If you had had the red and then all of these were, I don't know, what's good more, what's a better adjacent color for that? If you wanted to stick to some kind of color, um, you know, if they were all like a really desaturated deep blue, um, you know, that would work a lot better if you then, especially if you, especially if you desaturate the color. So you got some, some, you know, light pushes into a more gray infused tone and some dark pushes into a more black tone, then it's, that would work fine. You know, something like that. Okay. So, uh, but my thoughts is also really focus on the separation of your elements, having nice dark lines, separating all of the individual elements, all the individual pieces, make everything feel like it's separate. Like for instance, the red here just blends into the brown of the legs, right? Like what's what's going on here? This is like, is this red or is this brown? That kind of thing. So there you go. All right, so let's keep going. Next up, Florian. Uh, thanks for the feedback. Love exploring light and wanted to ask if you have any tips. Here are three factions. Want to get different schemes under the general idea of different light situations. Yeah, sure. So I looked through all these earlier. Um, I think they're nice. You know, you've got this sort of warm yellow light in one, uh, blue light in another, and the sort of pink light on the, the final one. Um, yeah, and for the most part, I think they work. I think the biggest issue is just smoothness of everything. I think as far as your light placement goes, let's actually go back to, the, to these because I think this is probably the one where we can talk about it the most it seems like you're deepening your shadows uh in the parts that aren't lit um we might be uh, a bit over like over stretching it in some cases um you also want to make sure that you keep them all the same like i noticed on I don't know, yeah this girl like we have a warm yellow light and yet we still push the hair into blue highlights which doesn't really make sense like this is it's either yellow or, or blue so like this big i i noticed the biggest challenge we have is just we need to smooth all this out. Like, as if we're just talking evaluation on light placement, I think it works. If we're talking evaluation of, like, you know, the overall paint job, the challenge is that we've got um, a lot of roughness to the paint and things like that. So you'd want to refine from this step and smooth everything out. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, let's keep going. Uh, next up, Craig. Um, with a big old uh, Lord of... Uh, or, um, Nurgle guy, great and clean one. There we go. I got there. Um, any critical feedback appreciated? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think the problem is the skin still doesn't have enough tonal variation, like on the whole, and it has to do with the volumetric highlighting. It's things I've talked about already in this review many times. Top of the arm, same color as the bottom part of the arm. Top of this boob fold is the same color as the bottom of this boob fold, and, like, you know, that's just there should be more change in there now as well with something like this you probably need more variation of hue as well not just variation of value 
Um, like you, you kind of just treated everything as though the most recessed is always the darkest, and then the outside is always the brightest, no matter where it is vis-a-vis -vis the actual light source. Um, but hue would also serve you well here, having in more glazes that show overall changes into greens, purples, magentas, those kinds of things, will make the skin look more vile and disgusting and, uh, and nurgly. So, there you go. Okay, next up, Dan. Uh, feedback on his entry into Miniature Monthlies. Uh, sure. So, I, I did look at this piece. Um, there's a couple things that... Uh, that stood out to me. Um, one, I mean, the fig itself is not great, like Mr. Bendy Sword here. You know, you gotta watch out for stuff like that. Like, fig choice matters, right? Like, the better the quality fig, the better job you can do with it, okay? Um, and if you have something like this, it's you gotta either fix it or use something better, like cut that sword off, put a new blade on it, you know, whatever the case, right? Um, there's things I certainly liked a lot about this one. Um, the, like, underglow of the red and stuff on him I thought sold really well. I thought the wood tone was nice. And I get what you're going for here of this guy emerging from shadow, this big demon, but this stick just didn't work, right? Like, under any lighting condition, I can see the stick, and that's a problem. It's not supposed to be a big stick. Like, my impression of what was going on here was there's supposed to be a big demon I can barely see any of, right? And that he's just coming into the light of this extreme spotlight. Um, the problem with that is, um, one, you told me there's an underlight here of red, okay? So assumingly that underlight would be on him as well, because you've, you've said it's coming up from this side. There's a bit of it here, there's a bit of it here. So this should have the same red. Two, that big stick doesn't work. Like, it's a, it's a cool concept. You know, famously, this was a, much like what someone did with a diorama piece a long time ago with Golden Demon with a giant, you know, reaching through cave holes in blackness, and it was just like the head and the hand. But, you, you know, like, you're, you're kind of the concept outpaced the execution here because the big stick just doesn't work. Like, it makes it look like, it makes it look like it's a giant head on a stick. Right, and my I can sit there and go, well, I can imagine that stick's not there, but it's there, right? Um, so if we're gonna sell that image, then you know you'd be better off, like, honestly, you would have been better off having more of the demon in frame and slicing him directly in half, like having the whole front half of the demon in frame, so you have connective tissue for all of it, and then you literally just bzzz, buzz the left, the rest of it, and then flatten it and black that side. Then I would have been like, okay, now you're telling me, you know, now it's a story I can see what's going on, right? So, um, and you still could have had the same impression. It just, uh, it just would have been, um, uh, it would have been easier for me to sell. The other problem is you're using a, what is a normal man-sized demon parts, and then you're extending it way out. Like, that leg is not the right size for something that tall, right? It, it doesn't work size-wise. Like, this is a normal demon-sized leg. Like, this, this, his leg is basically the same size as this guy's leg. Right, if we spin around here, their legs are almost the exact same size. Right? So, like, this isn't to scale with this. Right? So, there you go, Dan. I hope that helps. Great piece, though. Very cool. All right, Joe, uh, thanks always. Uh, just looking for first impressions of what to work on for this bust, especially with regards to textures or extra details. Sure. So first of all, I think it's coming out really nicely. Um, love the the dots and stuff. Um, I would desaturate those some. They're a little too strong, and they need to have a little bit more of like a skin tone around the edge of them, perhaps, or uh, soften them. You know, they need to be a little more varied. They, Especially on the lower cheeks and the shadows, they feel a little too pronounced. Um, you know, so bringing them down into where maybe there's a bit of a glaze of a skin softly over them or over the edges could make a big, uh, could make a big impression. Um, the face itself needs a little bit more, um, attention, especially around the eyes, more transition here around the top of this piece, because that actually is a, an area where color tends to fade and change. Um, same with under the nose. And then this needs to come in a little more on the side. Um, like we need to bring that in so she doesn't, so her nose doesn't feel quite as fat. I understand she's like clearly half work or something, and so probably has, you know, a more broad nose. That's fine. It's just it's we're extending the sides of it a little bit too much to make it look more like it's broken than it is a large nose. The hair is probably the biggest area where I think we've got improvement. We need to get more light catch on there. More like it, the hair is in almost complete darkness right now. 
whereas she is painted in very bright light. So that's actually the number one thing that stood out to me there. So that's what I would, if I was going to focus on one thing, it would be the face and the hair. Uh, so that's my thoughts. Uh, Ildars, uh, okay. Um, review on the attached model. Um, uh, mistakes and flaws and sort of stuff. So the picture's a little small. It's hard for me to tell. I, I like that you put them all into one thing, but do make sure we've got a bigger scaled picture because it's really hard for me to see detail. But that being said, I very much like what you got going on. Um, I like the orange in the hand and the reflection up onto the side. Um, I like the, um, the like sort of evil arcane magic on her foot where she's stepping. I think that actually sells really well. I thought that came out great. Um, that's fantastic. Um, a little bit of that light cast back up onto the lower parts of the dress might sell really well. Um, the texture and stuff on the dress, I think, works uh, quite great. The skin, it's a little hard for me to tell. Other than, like, sort of the orange glow and some of the reflection, I'm not sure about the other tones worked into it. Um, like, I love this part here. I'm not sure about over here on the female side of her if I've got enough other tones or hues in there. And then the only other thing that jumped out at me was the big claws, which are really sort of a focal point of this miniature, feel kind of flat and boring compared to everything else. Um, they just don't have the transition of value as you come out toward the end. Um, they feel kind of uniformly textured and highlighted. And if there was some kind of transition there, uh, it would feel a lot more visually interesting uh, and match with the rest of the piece where you've got a lot of these lighter areas around the outside moving into something uh, darker and then bright in the very center of the thing. But overall, this is a really cool piece. I'm, I'm like, I, uh, I really like the take on it here. I love the big hot claw and the reflection it's giving, um, as that's sort of this reflecting this orange light onto her shiny skin. I think that that sells okay. Uh, yeah. So there you go. All right. Next up, uh, Alex, uh, tabletop gaming piece, how to improve the best bit and how to improve the worst bit. Um, sure. Um, so, you know, it's a fun model uh, of turning the, the uh, dragster into, like, a, on, on rails here is, is funny. Um, with the... Be careful with the smoke like this. Like, this is... it's That's probably the worst piece. <laughs> just because it's too over the top. And it's too much of just gray. And it really blocks out. If you had a little... If this was a third of this amount of smoke... I mean... This kind of cotton smoke never super sells, but I've done it before too. Sometimes you can get interesting effects with it, but you got to really stipple in there and have lots of different things, and it can help if you've got other, like, stippled bits in it. But either way, don't go this big with it. Like, if this was a third of it, if it stopped here, I would be, or maybe trailed out and something like that, I'd be much more about that. The execution on the on the the dragster itself is good um i like the the red and the tone i like the stripe i like the flame i think that's your your the execution on the body i think is your your by far the standout i think that looks really nice good edging good capture of the the um uh, of some of the color shifts i think what we need to do is have the panel lines more well separated here like these pieces aren't well separated here and here and here stuff like that. So you want to make sure all that stuff gets well separated. And then you may want to push the shadows on the stuff that's very much inverted from the light, like right here around the front. Those areas might need even a little bit of deeper shadows just to really push them. So there you go, Alex. Hope that helps. Cool piece, though. All right, Stephen. Uh, Abaddon, working on uh, smooth blends and contrast. First attempt at non-metallic metal. Would appreciate any feedback to take it to the next level. Sure. Um, so... You know, I, I was looking through this. Um, I'm not sure what your which piece is your non-metallic metal. I mean, clearly the gold is still um, the gold. Uh, yeah, old old Abaddon. Oh God, what an ugly fig. Okay, so clearly the gold is still real metal. If you mean this thing being non-metallic, um, it doesn't really sell. We've got to smooth it out. We need more one. Uh, and two, we don't go bright enough. Um, so, and you know, the the volumes need to be more smoothly transitioning. We're like, we're basically at like two, four, five. We don't, it has to, we have to capture all the volumes there. Also be careful of a lot of shininess, like the red here, you used a glossy red paint. The bone is shiny. Like a lot of this stuff is shiny. It shouldn't be like these bones should be very matte. This head should be matte. This, this matte, this uh, matte, you know, like, so you've got to make sure things actually look matte and don't have these inappropriate reflections on them. 
Um, with the sword, I would say you want to bring that up a little bit. It should have higher light points on it to really show its energy. Uh, and then with the gold, we need to shade the true metallic metal like we're playing with non-metallic metal. And uh, so we want to make sure that we get the appropriate shadows and stuff like that into there as well. So there you go. Okay, next up, Abe. Uh, dry br uh, taking some advice from videos, dry brush, airbrush, more than first step, contrasting, and more. Not great with large vehicles, especially tanks and squarish objects. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, these are tough, this kind of vehicle shape. It just feel really small. Is this actually big? And it just seems small. It's so weird. Like, I thought these things were really huge, but this feels like it's really small. I don't know. Like, is there a small version of the Micron Pyramid? <laughs> I don't know. Um, at any rate... When it comes to big shapes like this, it's tough. So, but I'll, I'll walk you through like what you can do here. So, your execution on like the details and the light and stuff like that, and these the the little energy thing up top. I don't know. I don't know what any part of this is called. Um, all of this is working for me. Like, I like the green glow. I like the execution on that. I like the light here. All that kind of stuff. I like your little color you used for the inner stone or whatever. It's supposed to be that that stuff. I like this. Like this thing looks really nice. So that's all really good, and this this glow that's cast up here works. So then the question is, what do we do with with this, right, with the outside? Well, part of the answer can be um, nothing, and that's okay. Like, that's fine. Again, it depends on what your goals are. Now, if we're trying to take this up to the next level, then what we need to do is we need to think more about some volumetric sort of panel modulation type of situation where there's more darkness pushed toward the top and then more light pushed toward the bottom. Now, as well, with this kind of piece, you've got some nice lines in here. We can push some brighter edges. You can make those edges have a little bit of a color to them. So you could take a little bit of that green, and we could, like, take the upward-facing angle of everything or upward-facing in one side, like maybe the side toward the middle, and give their edge highlighting a bit of a green edge to them, right? So now there's something visually interesting that feels like they're being tied together, like a little bit of that green light's pulsing out of the middle and just catching on the edges it's not like a true osl glow it's just a little bit of that eerie light is bouncing around and catching right stuff like that can go a long way to um spicing up a big flat boring area like the outside of these big monoliths or whatever right so there you go hope that helps uh next up joseph uh some feedback on the triple osl um yeah sure so i think this piece uh really works um it's great as like sort of a manga anime style um, so I think the, the purple, like you've worked with sort of non traditional lights in a more white light, a blue light and a purple light, which is great. Cause those all stand out well against each other. Um, and I think you've roughly captured the angles pretty well. Um, there's a smoothness question where we need to smooth out some of these highlights. Like some of these are a little rough. Um, I get what you're going for as far as the effect of the outfit she's wearing. You don't want it to be perfectly... Like, I'm not asking you to make them smooth planes because I don't think that would work. I get the texture you're going for, and I think that does sell. We still need to smooth it down a little because they're just kind of out of scale. So maybe going in with and working the brush just a little bit more in there, maybe a couple glazes over the top, something like that. The, the white light works sort of the best for me. Um, the blue is really nice, so let's flip around to that. But again, be careful with these, like, bright white lines coming in here. Um, you want to, if they're, if you're going to have that texture, then it needs to carry out and they should be a little more diffuse, but I like the blue tone, the purple, the challenge with it is that it's a little stark in how suddenly it ends, whereas it feels like it should fade a little more. So my only problems with the purples are here in the legs, especially in this middle torso area where it really feels like it, like the purple goes to here and then stops, right? And what's going to happen is there should be some kind of shadow that it falls into before the next light hits it. Because where the two lights are shining from each side, then there's going to be a shadow in the middle. That's just how the light will naturally work. So this should be a little more shadow infused, a little more softly transitioning away. Like it needs to fall off a little slower there. Okay. So that was the biggest thing I noticed. But overall, this is a super cool piece. I don't know if you like made this yourself and decided to do this or if this is just how it is with the three little weird things looking at this lady but it's a, it's a pretty cool piece it's fun okay uh next up john uh looking good get, getting back into painting uh after 30 years away from the hobby wow all right well welcome back general advice on where to focus on to improve sure so 
Uh, I like that you're trying to work in some interesting purples and, and tones like that into the skin. That's good. Um, so you've, you've already got the right kind of ideas down. Um, you're really going bold, and I appreciate that right out of the gate. Um, my best advice is in smoothness, like work on your paint consistency and your smoothness. If you're, if you're just coming back, that's going to be the biggest change. Um, also work on sort of your total uh, volumetric highlighting, like your contrast on the arms is nice, but it needs to be, again, smoothed out, glazing those color transitions into one another, integrating those tones, and then in the same way, working them into the face, right? So it feels like you've got pretty good paint control here. I don't really see a lot of stuff being where it shouldn't be, so that's good. Um, you're just going to want to work on basically smoothing and glazing and again you're blending that's going to be your number one thing that i notice here and then making sure you're drawing the visual interest to the face to the center of the figure where it should be so popping up the interest on that adding more interesting shadows and smooth transitions around the face stuff like that so overall cool piece john uh, welcome back uh great stuff for just coming back to it after a long time you're you're doing great all right, next up, Serena. Uh, first non-game miniature, um, shooting for more tabletop standard, but you're a beginner in the hobby, and this is also your first attempt at basing. Um, sure, any feedback is appreciated. So, absolutely. Um, it, you know, this is an early miniature, so my best advice is just keep working on getting your paint applied thin, learning your paint dilutions, and your brush control. I mean, that's the most important thing I can tell you. When you're working on things like your blending, like this line is very hard here, that's just stuff that's going to come over time. You need to work on pushing your contrast, like I talked about to you know to other folks, and that's just something that comes with working. Go check out my how to shade true metallic metal like non-metallic video, like I mentioned earlier. And when it comes to basing, uh, I like where your head's at. It's got some good stuff going on, but don't have unpainted stuff next to a painted miniature. Everything on a base needs to be painted in some way. So like this sort of chip material you've used to do the base, it's a cool thing. If you had then primed over it dry brushed it, painted it, and created a scene, right? But as it is, you can't just lay down material and then call that a base. Like, it's got to have paint on it. Even if it's only, like, with the tuft, if you only put a wash in it and then dry brush it, you don't need to prime tufts or whatever. Like, you can set them down at the end, but they still need to have a little bit of acrylic paint on them because otherwise they just stand out. They don't have the same level of contrast then that the rest of the piece does, and they naturally feel fake, and, like, they don't belong in the world that the rest of the miniature does. Okay. All right, next up, Joshua. Uh, uh, yes, I saw the canteen wasn't painted, but that's okay. Um, whatever you want, color-wise, it doesn't really matter. Keep it something neutral, like a desaturated different green or brown or something like that. Um, I think she looks really nice. Um, I think that your skin is coming out well. I do want to still see, want to see some additional colors glazed into the skin. Like I like the blue, but again, some purple, some magenta, stuff like that will make it feel more like a living being. We just recognize that as humans. The bag feels like it could have more texture to match it to the um, to the figure itself, okay? And her hair needs a lot more attention, and if she's going to have black hair, the angle that I'm looking at her is straight on, so this would be a highlight coming right along here that would create the, the light for me to create that halo. Again, go look at your Pantene bottle, stuff like that. Um, I love the blue of the skin. I think your highlights are placed really well. I think her face has the most light on it, and that draws a lot of attention. That looks beautiful. The eyes look great. Uh, and I think the texturing and stuff you did on the cloth looks really, really well on the her sort of hoodie or whatever she's wearing. So that all sells for me. All right, next up, uh, Michael. Uh, first piece where I took more thought about color composition and placement. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. I think the green and the pink work okay. There's not a huge amount of color composition going on here. I think the little pink flowers on the base work just fine. Um, you know, again, with browns, whites, and silvers, and neutral tones, it's they're really not part of a composition. They're just color. Now, there's a bit of a distinction here with your clay pots, since they're orange. Like, those are true color orange pots. So they stand out a fair amount, but it's not so bad as to cause any kind of real challenge, because it's still a very desaturated thing. Though I'd be happier if there was a third instance of that somewhere, uh, I don't know what that would be other than maybe like the rake could be the same thing instead of metal or something like that. Or if there was a little third piece on the base somewhere of this clay, like if there's a little pot sitting on the ground, anything like that. Um, so compositionally, I think it's fine. I like the little touches and I think the, the bright saturated pink pop color is used in just the right amount. So, uh, I have no issue with any of that. Um, you may want to think about increasing the contrast on your whites a little and taking some more 
care into the shadows there, but it could also just be this picture's kind of overexposed with direct light. I can tell because there's a shadow literally cast behind it. So it could just be that. All right, next up, Jason, uh, second crack at a bust. Um, main things you need to work on, sure. So just as I've said with every other bust, like we've got to get more in here, right? Like, so we don't have the, we just don't have the, the life in the face because there's no color to it. Um, you know, there's got to be tones of purples and oranges and blues. Um, so like around the eyes, the red tones that would be worked in there. Like my best advice is like this kind of feels like it's supposed to be um, Morgan Freeman or somebody like that. So like Google a picture of Morgan Freeman in one of his, you know, headshots or, or things like that and really look at it. Don't just don't just see it. Look at it. Right. Or don't just look at it. See it, I guess. Whatever. Stare at it for 20 minutes and really look at all the nuances. Look at the detail in his skin and stuff like that, right? Where colors are reflected, where there's soft blues cast into here, where you've got reds and purple infusions, where you've got the light pushing in. Again, so we just need to bring up the contrast on the face and infuse those other tones, more variation of hue and value. As to the non-metallic on the horn, I mean, it just needs, it's fine, it just needs smooth down. I don't think there's anything specifically wrong with it. You just need to smooth out the tones there. All right, next up, Panda. Um, with these guys, you're quite happy, but, uh, you know, what? what isn't good? Uh, I think these guys are fine. I, I think they're interesting, weird, little, crazy, creepy monsters. Uh, I quite like the eyes and their little light reflections you've done. I think that's great. Um, I think probably the only thing that really stands out to me is their red tentacles um, not being quite as clean or crisp as they could. They feel like they need to be a little more separated from the body of the miniature, like darker parts underneath them to make them stand out more probably coming into a more pink tone at the highlight and then having into a more purple shade. Um, and then there could be a little more purple infusion into the blue shadows of the, the skin of the alien creature itself. Um, but yeah, other than, other than that, these guys are weird, uh, but cool models. They look like they have little jelly beans in their head as their eyes. It's cool. I don't mean that as a bad thing. They, they look creepy as I'll get out is what I mean. All right, Andy, Armager Warglaive, mix of non-metallics and metallics, uh, and looking for CC on that combo and the general feedback. Yeah, uh, I don't mind it. I think it's fine. I can see what's non-metallic and I can see what's metallic. Um, so, I mean, that's a thing, but I don't know that that's bad. You're, you've relegated the non-metallic to the parts of the thing I would expect to be, to have that kind of a different feel to it. So, works okay for me. Um, as far as the actual non-metallic goes itself, we need more one and probably more five in some places that does the contrast isn't high enough on it. Um, like if you look at it, it's really easy for me to tell the difference because the real metal has super high contrast and the fake metal does not. I mean, that's, it stands out. Like look at this guy's leg and how bright and white all of this is and how dark that spot is right there. Like we go from a one to a five on, on, you know, real metal just that fast, but I don't have anything similar up here on this part. Right. Which is in non-metallic. So, you know, that's what I would say. Um, as if you want them to be super clean, that's fine. I generally think War Machine should have some kind of streaking battle damage something because they're not living things. They, you know, the second this thing walks out of the factory, it's going to have scratches and dents on it. So micro textures, scratches, tiny dots, dusts, pigment, all that kind of stuff can really go a long way. Um, I would also push your panel shading more. It feels like the panels are all pretty flat. Um, pushing that with more shading, more depth. Uh, I think would also be the next, the thing I would recommend. But overall, I, I like the color tone; it's cool. Uh, love the crisscross pattern on on the on the side here. I think that looks uh, really fun. Love the application of the the decal up here. Yeah, stuff like that works for me. So as far as detail goes, yeah, good good stuff. Really like the eyes too. He did a great job on the on the eyes of the of his face. Really draws the attention. So that's good. This is where you want to draw attention on armagers, and you you actually did that. All right, Alberto. Uh, okay, uh, what would you have done differently in this diorama? So I, I looked over this earlier. Um, the skin feels a little sallow on Don Quixote and the other guys. Like, again, the skin needs to be smoothed out. We need to be controlling the skin more as far as the right zones being highlighted. Like, his cheekbones right here have super high highlights, and his nose does. And then it sinks down into a very dark thing here. Like, your 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 face doesn't go like that. Right? Your face has a line of light that travels across it, right? That kind of stuff. Um, and then again, the infusion of other tones beyond just, you know, sort of Caucasian-ish flesh tones. Um, so that's the thing. 
Uh, also on the horses, they feel like they could have the most room for growth through the addition of things like fur and stuff like that. I understand that the other guy is actually riding like a donkey or whatever. Um, but through like where there's not sculpted fur texture of adding fur texture um, and smoothing some of it out, especially some of the white on his horse feels quite rough. Um, the armor itself uh, of, of Don Quixote doesn't quite sell to me. Again, if it's meant to be non-metallic, some of the areas like the big uh, chest plate and stuff up here don't quite have the level of contrast I would expect. I think also if you thought about stippling, these kind of big, assumingly his armor is a bit worn, given that his nature. Um, so a bit of like uh, stippling and stuff like that around could go a long way on that. Okay. All right, Tate. Uh, so you said your last feedback to me was on increasing contrast and basing, so advice would be great. Uh, same thing. It's still the same thing. We The bones are too flat. We don't have enough dark. We don't have enough light. They're not well enough to find. The red is too flat, right? We don't have each individual little element of the the handle picked out. The skin is too flat. We don't have enough shadow tones, not enough reds, not enough purples, not enough other tones worked into it, right? I mean... It's the same story as last time. Now the basing looks a lot better. I like it. I like the grass and the wood and stuff like that. Got to keep pushing that contrast. Uh, again, individual fur texture, the hair, the bone, the metal, the skin, everything more, like a lot more. Go look at, you know, any, I painted this girl two or three times now. So you can go look at my versions of it and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about, right? Uh, as far as really, you, we got to push that contrast up. So that's what I'll say. Same advice. Keep going. It's getting better. Keep going. Uh, Rob, uh, any advice on painting older minis? Well, first of all, I'm not your guy for that. I hate older minis. I think older minis generally look terrible and should be uh, obliterated and shot into the sun. So there you go. Uh, so I'm not probably your guy for that, but I can give you advice on how to paint things. So I'll, I'll, I'll tackle that. And I think you did a great job on this guy for one of, I think, one of the most atrocious sculpts in the history of sculpts. We probably have a different opinion there. Uh, I think you actually made this look quite stunning. Um, I like your transitions. I think your gold really works. Um, a little bit of deeper browns on some of the gold in some of the places could have uh, worked. Maybe a little bit of a purple infusion into that deep brown. Uh, but the five is the only part of that I find a little bit lacking. Uh, I think the armor looks fantastic. That Space Wolf armor super sells to me. Uh, I have no pushback on that at all. So that's great, great execution on this fig. Uh, and then finally on his skin, you know, that's probably your other place. Like, make sure you're still working in those tones, especially pink tones. He's in the cold and in ice. His skin would have more blood expressed, so there would be more red and stuff like that in there. Uh, and then you always want to think about blue around the lower jaw on things like space wolves or anything like that because they probably have five o'clock shadows, which gets expressed as blue tones. But very good. I mean, this has got to be one of the best versions of this guy I've seen, so that's pretty pretty great okay next up Tebow uh, who won the miniatures masters painting competition with this piece um, uh, and my feedback to him I mentioned the absence of a catch light from the blue light yeah sure so I'll walk you through what I mean Tebow so it's only a few places I mean this this thing is a freaking masterwork dude so I don't you know, there's not much room here but here's what I mean the hair itself doesn't have the blue light expressed in it the the normal light like it doesn't have this other light that's up here that's not the warm fire expressed in it in its secondary tones and the catch lights on the blades aren't present so what i mean by that is if we oops let's go around to what which picture do i want yeah this one so here we have the softer light but softer light isn't completely softer it's still going to catch on metal so there should be a catch light like here or here you know or here or something like that like a a shot of a little bit of a light catch where there's a point of white light, right? And the hair should have that same color infusion to the edges. Those are like the only two things I noticed on this man. The the introduction of this like lava tone into this red reflection of, you know, this figure dancing over lava, I thought really uh, worked incredibly well. So super cool piece. This is great. This is this is your best work, Tebo, by far. I mean this is this is top notch. Uh, Scodster, um, yeah, I saw this piece online, um, feedback on the composition and transport of the message. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a fun piece. Honestly, I, I think it works pretty great. Um, you know, whacking the earth and, uh, getting angry with it. I think it's really funny. Um, 
I don't know that I have any great... Here we go. Let's look at this one because that's that's a nice center image. Um, as far as just selling the, the image of what it is, I love the moon as the lamp. I think that's hilarious. Um, so, yeah. I mean, as far as telling the story, I think it's great. I think it's how we all feel. I had an emotional catharsis when I looked at this online. Um, you know, painting-wise, is there some stuff we could improve? Sure. Um, but, you know, like some of the things would be smooth and the colors can be enriched a little bit. But uh, but on the whole, just, you know, I don't think that was really the purpose of your question or the point. I think this is a, a fun-looking or a fun diorama that sells the message, and I love it. So, yeah, I, I, you wouldn't have needed to, give, needed to give me any explanation for it. I feel what this woman is feeling. All right, next up, John. Uh, more contrast in the last entry wasn't a great sculpt. This is the latest attempt at this paint scheme. Uh, worrying about his highlight and shadow placement. Um, yeah, sure. So we're getting better. Um, this fig is a little bit better sculpt. I think the shadow let's um, that you're capturing there along the back leg is we're getting there. We need to keep, like, this is nice. We need to keep pushing a little bit more. Um, so we still need to continue drawing that contrast down. With the edges, they need to be smooth and sharp on these edge highlights. I wouldn't go into the white on them. Like, our, we're, we're jumping too high there. So that should be more of, like, a, uh, a yellow-infused tone to get those edges. Um, like, bring it in a little bit. I understand you're going for metal, and so you want a sharp highlight. That's good. Just don't jump all the way to white. Keep that to a more yellow-infused tone. It'll still feel quite bright and near white. Um, and continue to pull your shadows down. We still need more volumetric shadows over things like the inside of the torso, the inside of the thighs, and the individual pieces, right? So uh, in here and stuff like that. Keep pushing it. It's definitely you're making progress in the last one. We just got to keep going. Uh, next up, Duarte. Uh, another month. Uh, uh, sure. Does he look bored or in distress overall composition and are the saliva effects working? Um, yes, this piece is incredibly disturbing. Um, I mean, you know, feedback, there you go, that's, that's a good shot of it. Um, yeah, sure, the, the drip effects work. Um, he definitely does not look bored. He definitely looks in a high amount of distress, that's for sure. Uh, so this piece is, you know, nightmare-inducing. Um, I think if, like, as to all your questions, it totally works. The thing I would tell you to keep pushing is just the contrast on it. Like, we need some more highlights and lowlights and stuff like that. Some of the elements, especially the jacket and the ribbon in his hair and his hair itself and the tentacle and things like that are a little flat. But uh, execution-wise, I think you're, you know, emotionally, compositionally, and stuff like that, as you asked. Yes, it, it sells exactly what you asked about. No, no issues there at all. Uh, James Lynch, uh, been working on Nighthawk Force with this scheme. Thoughts on the metallics? I know the lighting isn't technically accurate. Um, who cares whether the lighting is technically accurate? And who even knows what the, the technically accurate would be? Who knows what the light is around this guy? Could be he could be under three suns or zero or seven moons, whatever. Um, now, the question is, does it sell, right? And the answer there to me is, yes, it does. Uh, I especially love the sword. I think that is the big success. Um, I think the helmet is also nice, uh, especially the front of the helmet. Uh, I think with the um, I think with the wingies, it might have worked a little better if there had kind of been two spots of light, but I'm okay with one. Um, it just isn't as visually interesting as the other elements because it's kind of a large, flat area. Um, maybe some more dots or something like that to break it up. But the sword really works. Love the infusion of a little bit of color on the into that. It's not all one color. I think this is. I think these are really great. Uh, like the bones, like the infusion of that light in there. Uh, that color that you've chosen for the bone is really great. And yeah, I I think it totally sells, man. I I, I think the sword is my favorite part. Um, I love the little bits of green in there uh, worked into it as well to, to kind of draw it all together. I'd love to see a little maybe green worked into some of these as well. But that has a little bit in it, a little blue maybe, but a little bit of green working in here I think would be fantastic. But overall, James, this is, uh, this is a super cool looking guy. Um, one thing I would say is make sure we get a little bit more touch down here on the ends of these flames. Just kind of bring them up to ultimate light um, because they feel still a little too airbrush type thing. Uh, and whereas what I want to see is like some of those edges and little bits of it still kind of brought out and given that same level of, of visual interest. That's all. James is a great painter. And I, I, I hope to make it to Australia, James, and see that, that, uh, that force. All right, Gavin. Um, yeah, so I saw this piece online um, before you ever posted it here. And I got to say, I, I really love this, man. I think this is great. Um, 
I thought you did a wonderful job executing on the the dual light scheme. Um, some of the stuff when I looked at it, you know, you could could be um, some of the colors could be and some of your transitions can be smoothed just a little more. But I think that's maybe my only piece of feedback for you. The all blue side, we may want to think about deepening the shadows. Let's see if I can get a good picture of it here. Uh, nope. I, it felt like in one of the pieces, like we didn't have enough deep shadows on the back side of those muscles, especially on the back or in the cloak. Maybe it's a little bit deeper up here. Let me see if I can get to the right image. There's one earlier that really, yeah, here we go. Like maybe a little bit deeper up here. Um, I like the, the deep in here, but on this side of his back and stuff, you know, drawing, drawing some of those shadows a little deeper because he feels a bit oversaturated on this side. Like all of the light is exactly the same brightness. Whereas it feels like there should be a little bit of variation, right? So some of the edges pushing a little more into deeper shadow. Um, but yeah, this guy's great, man. That's, you really, you really did a magnificent job executing on this dual light scheme. I think you did wonderful. I think it looks great. So yeah, hundred percent. Not sure the non-metallic gold here in the middle sells. That's a little flat, but the lighting scheme of like the flesh and the stuff like that, that all sells to me hundred percent. Okay, Robert. Um, okay, uh, is there anything you can tell by the pictures? What you call it is this need, isn't needed for an army or tip you can give like you would achieve a better result if you. I mean, it's hard to say. Um, overall, I feel like you know these guys look perfectly fine. If you're talking about for a tabletop quality force, it's certainly fine. Um, you know, you may want to think about with forms like this a little bit more pre shading. Uh, highlighting so like you know if you're using an airbrush to lay down that green or something you know going with a stronger volumetric highlighting initially that's a quick way to get fast and easy results and still like preserve all your highlights um but no i don't think there's anything here i wouldn't do i think they feel like they're okay um we could push the contrast a little more like you could have some more shadows pushed into the green plates on the tau armor and stuff like that where they're where things would be more in shadow but i mean the it's much the same story as everything else that I've covered so far, which is, you know, we need more contrast overall. So if you're, I don't know if there's anything I wouldn't do, but I might change the way that you lay down your initial contrast colors because that might help you get higher contrast in a quicker time or the same time. So there you go. All right, next up, uh, Bleep Bloop uh, with his Desecrated Storm Vault. Uh, this is just a super cool piece. Um... I, I, and so, oh, he said, curious what you, uh, what you think about using video movement, other stuff in text. This is so cool because what effectively happens is he has his, his phone under there. There's like a, an old, not his phone, but an old phone under there. And it can like display different images of cracking up through the thing. And it's got a little battery pack underneath it and stuff. I saw how he built it. Yeah, there you go. Isn't that amazing? Like that's so super cool. Um, I just, I dig the heck out of it. That's, that's cool. What do I think of it? Man, I think this is amazing, dude. I think as part of your display board, this is mind-bogglingly cool so yeah I, I love that you can you know put on different images and you made it so you can kind of swap the different uh element around there as you need to so no it, it completely works for me and uh i would love to see more of it okay very cool stuff always great to see stuff from bleep okay jacob um basically he's asking about the osl it's all the questions um okay so, um, yeah, the question is, does it, you know, does this neutral light work? So here's my answer. The problem is not your light, it's your shadow. Again, you've painted the rest of him as though he's in some completely normal lighting situation. And then this thing, this little eggy here, is like casting a glow. If we took the rest of him into deeper shadow, if we flattened out the rest of him and really pushed the the contrast way up so like under his beard on the side of his head and under the folds where it is that stuff all got like a lot darker and then we put it against like a black backdrop it would sell better does the white do other color is one of his other, one of your other questions jacob was to do other colors of osl work easier yes absolutely because then they they have this natural contrast and you can kind of fade them out and stuff like that when you're just dealing with like an ultra bright light source it becomes a lot harder because you have to sort of manipulate um your level of shadows a lot more harshly um to to capture like that this is more than just normal light plus right 
But I think honestly, the the light catch isn't the problem here for me. For the most part, I think you you know you're pretty much. I would love to see an image from like we don't have this from the right angle. I need to be looking at the OSL like you saw with the barbarian where he gave me the all blue picture, right? Um, but I think what you don't have is is you know deepened shadows. If that's the again, think of like you know when Gandalf holds up his his staff and lights it up and you know uh, calls upon the flame. He, uh, you know, like, this is all the light in the world to him, other than, like, a bit of fire in front of the distance, right? This weak fire. Everything else on the back of him is in shadow, right? So uh, that's what you want to think about there. All right, Matt. Uh, deliberate practice on skin tone here, trying to bring up the contrast without getting too cartoony. Yeah, I, I hear that. We got a lot longer to go. We're nowhere near cartoony. Um, so much more contrast could be built in here. Again, like I, you know, let's let's do a little experiment. Uh, Mark Masklands uh, miniatures, sure. Mark Masklands is one of the greatest painters of skin tone ever, right? And like you can just Google through all this stuff and like you know find things that uh, match into your color scheme, but really look at the way he you know infuses tones into here, right? Of course, I'm covering it up here. I'll move myself, right? Like, look at this darkness in the skin. Look at this. Look at the purple tones he's infusing. Look at the red. See the red in the cheeks? Stuff like that, right? And this guy's nearly, like, dead. Like, he's this weird chaos-infused half-dead guy, right? Whereas here with, like, this orc, right? See how he's got the yellows and a bit of the red tones in here and here, right? All these different wonderful tones he's working in. This is... Like, none of this is cartoony, right? This feels very realistic. So the point is we can go a lot farther, okay? That's, that's the, the worry here is not we're going to get hit cartoony land anytime soon. So we need a lot more variation of value and hue, okay? Like, really bringing it in there. Um, really up that contrast. Oh, watch some of my skin videos where I talk about the infusion of both color and contrast, okay? All right, Alex, uh, second submission, trying to work in greater contrast. Um, okay, so first off, I would ask, you know, try to give me a picture with diffuse lighting in front of a neutral background. It's hard to kind of see what's going on here. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we can still go farther. The picture's a little rough for me to tell. Um, it feels like there's still, you keep pushing on your contrast, but also keep working on keeping your elements separated, clean, and getting those those paint lines nice and smooth. It's hard for me to super tell here because again, like you've you've given me this much of the figure on the screen, right? Whereas if you got me closer, give me a bigger image, had me in a neutral background with diffuse lighting, I could probably give you better feedback. Uh, saying, uh, yeah, man, uh, coming along still. Uh, the part of this that doesn't work for me is the Ferrari red up here. If this was darkened down more, uh, that would sell. The green glow out of the hourglass is uh, mostly fine. Uh, it's a little bit strong on that part of the cloth. You might want to soften that up just a bit. Now, technically, it would not reflect off of that. Okay. Red doesn't reflect green. Green doesn't reflect red. That's why it's red, and that's why it's green. And so, like, if you shined a perfect green light at a perfect red surface, nothing would reflect. Right? Because that's why the surface is red. Um... So, because it's the it's the contrasting color, right? Uh, now, that being said, there's no perfect tones in the world, and, you know, light is light, and it's going to do something. Um, but I would still soften that some. Uh, but overall, I think, yeah, this is cool. I really like your execution of the sort of white-gray on this. I think that looks really nice. The red is also uh, where, where, you know, in the other parts of the red, I think that looks really good and well-executed. I like the head swap on this guy. I like him better with a normal marine head, so well done there. Okay, Johan, uh, well, keep, I hope you successfully get away from any giants. Um, grateful for any feedback, uh, one positive, one negative meant for the tabletop. Sure. Um, they look good. Uh, you know, I, I think you said you're their tabletop and you're just kind of starting out, so um, that's cool. Um, they, they look nice. Uh, what I would recommend, like your color is very smooth. Application looks nice. Um, 
So I think that looks good. I mean, what we need to do is continue to push the contrast. These guys have lots of texture in them. You can do it through washes and dry brushes and all sorts like that. You can get in there with your brush and pick out individual things of more lines of wood. Like wood has a lot of texture to it. And so anything you can do to bring that texture out is going to generally make them more successful. So that's my biggest piece of feedback for you. All right, next up, Jan, first submission. Would like to know what you think of the highlight placement or anything else that could be improved with the technique. Sure. Um, so the biggest thing I noticed was with the sword, uh, these, like, we've got to smooth these transitions out. Um, I also would infuse some kind of color. Um, in general, metal, especially metal that's reflecting this much light, is going to pick up something of the world around it. So, like, having some yellow tones from these bright wings or whatever would be a good idea. Uh, I really like the contrast on the armor plates. I think you did a great job there. Um, I think those look really nice. Um, you got, you're got running to a nice bright color, and it's in this nice plum. Um, I think the yellow could use a little bit more shadow. Like, we, we don't really have the yellow shadowed to the same level. So, again, infusing some of more, uh, maybe like rust tones or um, slight browns or, or, or light rusts or something like that into it, I think is probably the biggest area of improvement that I see here. Okay. Um, and you can see it when you look at this, where the armor has this wonderful level of contrast to it, but the yellow all just kind of looks like black gray. And you can really see the non-smoothiness of the sword when you're in that view. So there you go. Overall, cool stuff, though. All right, next up, Ben. Uh, first submission, this is first 75-millimeter mini. Um, so feedback on the good and the bad here. Sure. Uh, yeah, so this is a nice piece. Um, I think that overall uh, it looks good. What we need to work on here is, one, making our metallics more interesting. So really taking control of the light on that. Again, watch my highlighting true metallics like non-metallic metal video. Um, the red could use a little more smoothing smoothening out. Um, so on a figure this size, you also want to think about like where is texture appropriate, if it is at all. Um, so you want to have things like uh, show, you know, threads or small textures or stuff like that in there. Um, the face could use a little more color, especially, I know she's dead, but still infusing some kinds of, like, pink tones, especially in vampires that are full of blood, um, can really help sell them still as not that. Also, avoid ring shadows all the way around an eye. That just makes you look very tired. It, it, you know, I understand, like, if, you're, if your whole eye has this dark circle around it, it literally just makes you look completely exhausted. She... You know, you want to have this part of the eye have more red and pink infused tones, and this part have more purple infused tones, okay? And that'll generally, again, up the more feminine quality of it. Those are the things that jump out at me immediately, Ben, so I hope that helps. All right, Rodrigo. Um, okay. So, um, you're not too late, uh... General feedback on this tough woman, yeah, Belladonna or whatever. Yeah, this is great. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of the color scheme. This sort of pink and red and magenta and purple thing going on here uh, is nice. Um, she looks good. The biggest things I noticed much is with the last piece. I think her hair looks good. I think the infusion of, like, the texture on the feathers and stuff looks good. The armor has nice red, like, the magenta armor has really nice contrast to it. Love these nice shadows you're building down here. Um, so that all sells for me. The biggest problem was just like the metal, the kind of axe, and like her, the, the steel parts of her and the gold parts of her are all kind of boring. Um, I like her flesh tone on her, her hand and uh, in her face. I think those, I think that came out really nice. This is a beautiful, beautiful face you painted here. Uh, really love how well you captured the, the soft tones. Again, there's that nice yellow infusion in the highlight, nice pink tones. The lips look really good. The eye shading looks really, uh, shading looks really good. The uh, lighting under the eye and the pupil and stuff, that's all dead on. It's just your metallics are a little flat, so I'd work on, again, taking control of the light on those metallics and really popping those up. That would be my biggest advice. But overall, super cool. She's great. Okay, next up, Jake. Uh, yeah, just basically looking for feedback. Um, like the base, uh, I think that looks really cool. Um, overall, this is, she's nice. Where we need to do is, again, we need to push the, the contrast up on things like the cloak, more highlights up toward the top around her shoulders where the light would be gathering more, and then maybe a little more down here at the bottom. Like having a little bit more, we have this same universal highlight happening here, 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 here. There would be different lighting situations across that whole space, right? Um, her face needs a little bit more, again, 
more tonal variation in it. Her face is still somewhat flat. Um, I like the red in the cheeks, but again, some more around here and here, especially around the eyes. Her eyes themselves feel very uh, flat as far as that goes. Um, so like we like we saw with Belladonna there, where we have like some color here, maybe a little bit underneath and pushing in the more pink tone, that kind of thing. But I do like the rosy cheeks she did there. Uh, and then with this sort of blue non-metallic-ish type of thing you're pushing for the synth wave i would push that farther up it needs some higher ones and twos doesn't need to necessarily go into white but into a more blue white just especially around some edges and things like that that's where i would focus so there you go all right taigo uh looking for some feedback on things like color utilization highlight placement any mistakes sure so when i looked over this guy there's really one thing that stood out to me and it's that the swords don't work so and that's because we put the highlight it's one they're very rough two they're kind of not in any highlighted way i would understand right so like highlights just always look better if you're attempting some kind of non-metallic transition if they're in the middle and then light and dark go you know light and then with dark spreading out from it um you would be better off with a multiple transition here on blades of this size um they just wouldn't have one big sheen of color there's way too much true saturated blue in here um, that doesn't belong within this composition. This composition is all very neutral and stuff like that. And all of a sudden there's this shock of like really saturated blue just hiding in the middle of the sword. It needs to be smoothed out. The edges as well, when you're in a, like, this is rough because this sculpt is very soft. But, you know, one of the things I always do with these kind of figs is literally carve them down until I get sharp edges. Like I take an X-Acto knife and I carve them until I have a super sharp edge. Um, it's worth doing it for the prep time. That way you can get a nice white edge and stuff like that, and you can you can actually show those different colors. Um, the orc himself is good. We need to smooth out some of our transition from five to four and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I think that's what I would say. All right, and last one. Um, Christian, uh, this is his first 75 mil mini. Want to know your thoughts on contrast, composition, and take on NMM? Uh, sure. So... Uh, is good. We've got a lot of variation of hue in the skin. That's good. We need a little more one, so we need to bring up and think more volumetrically. When you're dealing 75 millimeter, this whole area has to be brighter than this whole area. And right here, I have the same highlight here, here, and here that I have here and here. This should be bright, but it shouldn't be as bright as this. Like, ultimately, we want to draw the eye up to the top of the fig, and we do that by creating a like you got to think about volumes as an ever shrinking pyramid, right? First, the whole film, the whole the whole thing, the whole figure, light at the top, darker at the bottom, minimally. Then each piece, right? Each arm, each shape, the torso. It's a you know it's a cylinder and so on and so forth, right? Then each muscle, right? And then each detail on the muscle, right? And constantly zooming, right? And building out those those details. Uh, so, you know, pushing it up just a little bit higher, I think, is what we could do. Um, also, softening it with a little bit of more sepia tones in a few places would help just to kind of smooth some of those areas out. Very subtle. I just noticed it would, it would feel a little more uh, natural, like somebody who's been outside a lot, as Mr. Barbarian seems like he would be, especially as you put him in a sort of Greek tropical setting, so he doesn't feel like he'd be Mr. Cold Guy. Um... Now, as to the sort of crazy non-metallic metal colors, yeah, I don't have any issue with these at all. I think you've got a nice take on them. Uh, some of the blends and stuff feel like they need to be smoothed down a little bit, but that's pretty minimal. Um, on the whole, like, you want to make sure your edges are nice and sharp. Some of these can be smoothed out a little. But I love the color takes. This is very, like, Craft World Studio, how they would do it. So it feels very much like you were looking at their work and drew some, some inspiration from them. And I think it's great. Um, I think this is actually the strongest part of the piece to me is, is your metal. I think that looks wonderful. It's very different, very creative, um, and very artistic. I, I think that's a great success. Um, a couple of places we could push highlights up just a, a, a little higher in some places, but that's pretty minimal stuff. For the most part, I think these dudes look, this guy, or the, the metal, I'm sorry, looks absolutely great. So with that, that brings us to the end of the month. Uh, like I said, next month will be the last month for these reviews. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, I want to thank everybody who submitted. So thank you so much for all of our people who were brave enough to submit and get feedback. Uh, as always, I thank you very much for doing so. And uh, if you want to join us, like I said, link is down below. And uh, we, uh, we look forward to that. Yeah, I do have to answer all three security questions. Don't forget about that. 
But as always, thank you very much to everybody, and thank you to everybody who's in the community staying positive, answering questions. That is what this community is all about. It's about sharing positivity uh, with other people, celebrating the hobby, celebrating art. So please keep doing that. Stay positive. Share your positivity with everybody. Take a minute out of your day to tell somebody how much you like their work. They post. It can change their whole day. So thank you very much, everybody. See you next time.